<laughs> Howdy. And a happy Friday to you all. How are you doing today? We have cozy mining hours ahead of us as we delve into the darkness and we try our very best not to scream in our ears. Before we begin, he needs to make sure to do a quick volume check. Hi! So sorry for the delay. How is everything? Are we doing okay volume-wise? But you know, if it is not to your liking, then it is a disgrace. Death, doom and destruction. Oh, we gotta prime it. We gotta prime it. Okay. It'll work in a moment. YouTube always just takes a second. Hello, D. Hi, and welcome to D. It's good to see you today on this lovely Friday. Hey, D. Hi. It's okay. Volume is okay. Can you hear the vintage Hi, vibes D. in the background? Everything going okay so hey, far? Hey, D. Hi, and welcome to D. It just takes a moment Hi. to think about what it's doing for life. <laughs> Hi, Dee! So far, so good on the volume and everything. We have cozy rain ambiance in the background. Hi, Dippy Doodle! <laughs> Welcome to Dee. Volume okay? That's Dee's primary concern as of this moment. Just to make sure that the volume is a benefit, so I could go. try again. But the volume is not going to be acceptable, right? I'm gonna make sure the volume is acceptable and will not cause your ears to spontaneously combust. That is not what we want. No combustion. You learned how to put D on the TV? Look, D's on TV. Fancy. It's not the shower. It's it's a rain and thunder boom. Okay, if he turns it up, does it sound less like a shower and more like rain? Yes, he cares about your ears. Most of the screaming, crying, death and dying is honestly not intentional. <laughs> it's just the chaos. That is weird. He is sorry for your ears. Good morning! You're allowed to be disoriented here. Oh, sorry. Disoriented here. <laughs> We're doing cozy Minecraft hours this day. So you don't you don't gotta do nothing. You can take your time. You can you can stretch and relax. You can grab some hot tea or coffee to help you start your day. Hi Magnoon! Welcome to tea! Kombi and Ohayadi. <laughs> Could you have that in writing in case anyone asks? Yes. D is not here to destroy your ears, and the potential ear damage is completely random and unplanned as an essence of. Just be. He is sorry for any damage caused. <laughs> you listen to the stream as your own. Oh, too many words. You will just make it short. Listen at your own risk. There you go. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. The dashboard doesn't look like him. Get out of bed. Hey, why don't you just stretch? You can just do a quick stretch, roll about a little bit. Is the rain too loud now? Or is the rain acceptable for a volume? Maybe you can turn it down just a little bit. Cozy rain vibes, because this is a slow fun. Oh, he forgot to pop into Ch Chitty Chat Chat. He was going to jump into it. Just fine. 
very chill vibes today. He is going to hop into one of her mini group chats in case any of her friends wants to join me. Maybe, maybe they join me. That would be nice. Cozy chill EP hours. EP Minecrafting on LinkedIn. So in case any of the friendos are up for some EP hours, they can join us. <laughs> okay, so can we get one, one final audience? Is everything at a acceptable level? Should we change the volume? of any of the particulars. We have some cozy vintage vibes. We also have rain, ambiance, ambiance. Not to be confused with raining Beyonce. That would probably be a dilemma if it were raining Beyonce. <laughs> it's cozy good. That is what we wanted for today. Something you may have noticed me chatting with some of her friendos. You are Beyonce? Oh, we got Beyonce in the chat. <laughs> Something that you might have noticed with be talking with her friendos um, not too long ago. Because everybody seems to be having kind of an eepy, sleepy week. And so Dee wanted to uh, play off of that eepy, sleepy week and allow people an opportunity to just enjoy enjoy and vibe and be eat. Eat okay to eat. <laughs> Hi and welcome to D. The high command is, as usual, a little bit delayed on YouTube, but D sees you, Kirkland. Welcome. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Exactly. Happy time zones to you all. And may today give you a cozy Friday to round out our week. There is the the goal of today. So what are we doing? We're engaging today in some cozy, chill Minecrafting. Let's see, we need to make sure to share the Minecrafting. So everyone can see it. Gotta set it. So yeah, we're going to hop into the mountain. Dia's going to continue digging for her temple. And hopefully we can start building today. It's been a long time coming to be able to build. We are playing in Renter, which is a public server. So if you wanted to join in and you wanted to participate, you absolutely can. Oh, what's this? We just got a message. Oh, so for those of you who don't know, Adi spent some time doing lots of different jobs, lots of different things, a combination of uh, different stuff in the realm of IT, and now Adi is doing some other work as a trainee because Adi is trying to, uh, Adi has been going back to school for her masters, and Adi wants to use that and has been trying to climb the ranks. He just got an offer for a part-time position. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <gasps> That's right, you're not in these small group. Maybe we should pull you in. It's mostly girls though. <laughs> the small group is mostly girls. But you would love to play with you. Uh, maybe for today, and just for today, we will invite the bush to the small group. They had a chat with the girls. Thank you. It'll, we'll, we'll see. It's a trial position. And if they like what he does in like four months, then he can have a more permanent position on the TV. Hmm. We will invite you in for just the day today. Okay. And we just create an invite. 
just for this one channel, you will mend it. But only for two. You can see this one. You can connect to it. You can speak. You can share. You can use all of these things. And this. And that. These setting up your permissions. And you can do that. And that. And that. In this one. In that one. In this one. So yeah, thank you, Vivo Gambari. It's my Vivo Gambari. The me. Konashi Goto. Mitsuko. Thank you. Suru Kamara. So this little position, we just got a message about. They want me to um, do some teaching. They want to be able to build their skill set so that perhaps one day they can have the ability to uh, be capable, like team leader. Mm. He has done some teaching in the past, for those of you who have never interacted with Dee before. He has, he has done a little teaching in the past, and with these, with these teachings, um, he has created custom course material, and then some. And it looks like they want you to create some more for them. They like what you do. Hi, Darnay. He sees you in the chat. How are you doing today? Hi, Dee. Howdy, howdy. I'm doing okay. How's Darlene's volume for everybody? If you turn on the TV, we have a cute sleepy dog. Look at you. That is the vibe of today. We eat. Is the volume good? Can you say a few more words, Darlene? Uh, I, I am darker in the bush. How's everybody doing today? Can you turn me down just a smidge? A few more words, please. I'm thanking in public. Uh, let's go ahead and do a test, test, test. Volume check, volume check. Sounds good to me. How's it sound to you? Hi, dog. These on me too, at least one to two days a week. Volume's good. Thank you, Jamie. We'll pop over to the game storm thing. Failed to connect. Oh no. Did he try restarting? Uh oh. Okay, you'll have to restart. Restart the game. It has apparently died. Why are you dying? Well, in. But yeah, these streams are here on YouTube, at least. Maybe one to two times a week. And these are the morning slots. You'll find me here on YouTube playing. The games that maybe we don't play on Twitch or doing content that is really just for fun. YouTube is the just for fun platform. This is the, hmm, it'd be okay if we grew, but D is not hard pressed to grow here. This primary growth platform and primary focus is to Twitch. Hi and welcome! How are you doing today, Jamie? And hi, Algorithm. You were late. Oh yeah! No, D just got an email from someone that he has created teaching stuff for in the past. And they want me to do more teaching stuff. So on on the one side, if he goes and does teaching things, then it means that D is able to make more money and not be so poor, which is nice. But it does take away from me being able to create with these current workflows. So, it is always a toss up. There's always going to be priorities that we have to balance when it comes to choosing the struggles we wish to face. Let's go to the gaming school. Oh, he's gonna move you closer. Let's see. Does he have a figgy just for God? He does have a Fugi just for that. But he has the full Fugi up in case any of the friendos want to join. So just uh, I, feel, I feel so honored to have my own uh, Fugi space. <laughs> you do, you have your own space with you. Special space for all the friendos. And if we get more friendos, we'll move stuff in. 
For those of you who don't know, this is Darlene in the Bush. Darlene, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself, where they can find you, where you stream, what kind of stuff you like to do? Uh, I'm Darlene in the Bush. I stream over on the uh, on the Twitter, or not Twitter, Twitch. <laughs> I just woke up. We're on the two. Oh, it's okay. These are EP hours, anyways. It does not have a shader for that. Let's see. It has I, a I do... Go ahead, go ahead. You like to play a lot of the uh, survival games? Stop hugging me. What kind doing, of uh, favorite? Uh, currently doing Conan Exiles. What do you like about Conan? This watched you play a few times on the server. It, it, it is fun. It uh, a lot more fantasy based than a lot of survival games, so. Also, the uh, magic system in the game that I haven't really delved into too much. Uh, quite fun. The magic system in Conan is fun? Why are the... Why are the golems hiding in the dark? <laughs> why? Why have they decided to leave us? And just they now fear the light. <laughs> Apparently, he's been trying to chip away this giant section because the golems just keep hiding in these corners and he is really not sure why. You'll miss the Kirkland. It is important that D be able to provide for self. Correct. Let's do a soups. Let's see how soups makes the love look. Looking for a cozier vibe for today. Between Seuss, Oceanus, and the complimentary cheese. One of these will have a vibe we can. Scruffy's pretty sure you can eat people in Conan. Wait, really? Can you eat people? Can you uh, this yes, you can uh, carve people up and get human flesh. You know, there were studies done on the consumption of human flesh, and it is not going to kill you if you eat human flesh. What will harm you is if you eat brains. Something about right. eating the brains. Oh, this is much better. Yeah, Seuss is good for the cozy part. If you eat brains, so. Oh, uh, yeah, you'll you get a. Uh... You get what's called a prion disease. Mm -hmm. Very weird. Long pig. <laughs> Do you know that from first hand? No, he doesn't know that from first hand experience. But D is definitely. Uh, how to put it? Mm. D is interested in lots of different science. And when going to in initial uni classes, he spent a lot of time learning about. Like, they are society, like proto civilizations, was part of these minor. Oh, uh, is is D not even one level? Not even. One level. This is going to break. Balance of it. Oh no, who died here? Oh no! Welcome back. Are you okay, Sakana Fish? Oh no! Goki! Where is that my fish? Asakana, asakana! How He's gonna do it again! Asakana, out here, doing daring deeds. Oh, Thank you! That's so sweet, they're so kind. The longer the pig, the more bacon on the pig. Likely a true. So D um, in uni studied a lot of stuff with photo civilizations as part of these minor work. Um, it was there was some really cool anthropological courses that we got to take, and it just piqued these interest. We had to learn why people did this stuff to understand like how our brains and habits developed over time if you did not know before many civilizations have actually consumed people this way but it was for ritualistic purposes and not for food there is uh, it's forgotten the name of them but there is a society I believe they still exist it's not in brazil but it is very close and they are being studied today by different scientific persons in the community. They have remained mostly untouched by men. And so people utilize them as study for 
or what you call it, for proto-civilizations. I don't remember what they're called. No, it is the word. But it's very cool, at least to see, to see how simple examples of proto-civilizations they still exist up in the wild still. Oh, thank you, Scruffy, for the little super chat. For those of you who don't know, we are accidentally monetized. <laughs> it literally happened on accident. So, uh, welcome. We do not have memberships yet. Maybe in the future we will have the membership. No sheeps yet. Hopefully in the future we will sheep. And, oh, here's the sticks. Here's the sticks. We accidentally became monetized. And he doesn't know how... Uh, there was a poll done the other day to continue with monetization. Even though Dee was like, no, Dee can just turn it all off. People were like, no, keep it on. Continue as normal and turn it off uh, later. We'll just turn on memberships when we, when we have them. We don't have memberships yet, but hopefully in the future we will get memberships. Well, how much do you need for iron pickups? You can't do iron pickups? Pick? There is no iron? There is no iron pickups. Oh, you know. You can super chat now. Yeah. It was. Thank you so much for the super. Yeah. Uh, it was requested by the community that you turn everything on. And he was like, oh, please, please don't waste your money. <laughs> So once again, he asks that you make sure to donate responsibly within your means and not in a way that would harm you, that will make you cry. Oh god, why did you die again? People are dying right next to me. And there's no way for you to stop. The disorganization of this box makes me cry. But it's okay, he's gonna ignore it for just a minute. You don't understand the YouTubes? That's okay. It does not make you dumb. Scruffy, it does not make you dumb. Do not insult my Scruffy. He will bite you. Okay? Look. Do not insult him. Just because you don't understand something doesn't make you dumb. In this case, it's probably... Have you moderated on YouTube before? Have you interacted much on YouTube? If not, it is not a matter of smartness. It is most likely a matter of just inexperience. Would you berate someone for not knowing how to build a computer if they've never done that before? That would be silly. Don't do the thing. It's three across the top like a normal thing. Why didn't it let you do it? Why Why did it freak out this way? Oh, look, we now have the cozy orange ambiance. Is this, is this too dark at night? Hi, friend and I, Nexi. Welcome! Oh my goodness, glad to catch you today, cutie. He is very mellow today. Yeah, we're doing cozy YouTubing hours. For those of you who don't know, Fred and I is the wonderful creator of these bit badges on the Twitch. Fred and I is a pixel artist and is just absolutely cracked. If you get the opportunity to check out what Fred and I does, you will not be amiss. It's just glorious work. They're amazing when it comes to pixelated details. If you're looking for a pixel artist, we cannot recommend them enough. If you are looking to commission someone, you will not be disappointed with their glorious logo. Booga! We have Booga Wop in chat. Welcome to DC. Booga Wop is Dee's glorious new video editor. Just give like give give an around for the amazing bubble up. If you guys have seen the new clips that have been dropping, that glorious editing is Bubble Up's fault. All of Bubble Up's amazing artistic genius being put to good use. D hopes that you're enjoying them as much as D is because that editing is on point. Finn and I, you do great work. Booga Wop, thank you so much for your patience with these weirdness. You are, yeah, you're bringing out the the glory that is the moments of the as experienced through the eyes of someone who gets to watch it. Like the way you capture the emotion that is felt by the community in the clips is priceless. Something that 
tells you that Bugawup is a master of their art and probably doesn't know it yet is when you watch a good clip, you are overcome with emotions that maybe you would not have had had you just seen the clip on its own. Like, let's face it, sometimes when we interact with um, creators in the community, what we find is that our creators, while we're in their streams, things are 10 times more funny than viewing clips alone. And that is because there is a, an element of emotional connection and context that you get from being in the stream. Bugawup has magically transformed these clips into something that can give you a similar experience even if you weren't able to be there. And that is a telltale sign of an extraordinarily talented editor. And he is blessed beyond words to have you on his team. Thank you for your support. D is honored to have you with us and to get to experience your creative journey. Thank you. And Fed and ID can't wait to commission you for more cute pixel stuff. <laughs> oh, you are most welcome. Here's some brutal loving honesty for you to be. <laughs> oh, no. Fed and ID wanted to ask. Have you ever had experience doing uh, stream avatars? Darlene, do you know what stream avatars are? Uh, I do not. Stream avatars is a plugin you might be interested too. Stream avatars is a cute little thing. If you've ever been on Perry Indigo streams, Perry is the cutie butterfly friend of bees on Twitch. Uh, Perry's got stream avatars up. And what it does is every member of chat gets a cute little avatar. And you wander around the bottom of the screen. You can also decorate your avatars. You can deck them out with a cute little swag. And when you watch streams, you get points based on your activity in the stream. So it's another way to reward viewers. And it's a cute little interaction-based mechanism whereby you can showcase more for your viewers and they get to wander around on screen. It's really cute. You turn your viewers into like your own personal Tamagotchi herd. But there's games you can play with stream avatars where they can all get together to fight giant boss battles and go on RPG style adventures. I think I saw on mm -hmm. a Perry stream they did a battle royale. Hi, Kurome! Welcome! We're doing cozy Minecraft hours today, so it is much more mellow than the usual chaos of of D. So if you're looking for chaos vibes, you might find intermittent screaming when we go into the mine, which is unintentional <laughs> screaming. <laughs> but today is cozy Minecraft hours. You got games on your swinks. You can get games on your swinks with stream avatars. The reason D brings that up is, hey, Fair and I, how would you like to turn the cuties into stream avatars? Ooh, ooh. We found an amazing streamer. We are we are six parts cozy, and the rest is cringe. <laughs> the rest is cringe chaos. Okay, okay. D will hit you up in 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 DMs. D needs to hit you up in DMs, and then you love cringe. If you ever get the opportunity to check me out on Twitter, you will see a lot of cringe. <laughs> not Twitter, not Twitter, uh, Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. You see lots of cringe there. And likely, this will be more akin to Big D vibe. You know, when you stream, your model plays a part in what kind of a character you are. And D has been stuck in cat adjacent body for so long. It has, it has turned D into a much more cat-adjacent individual. Darlene, do you feel affected by the bush? Have you yet noticed some of your mannerisms changing while you are the bush? Uh, not really. Pretty much the same as I always am. <laughs> no? Maybe it happens if you are looking at your model a lot. D has, for her stream setup, a way to make sure D is always monitoring the stream. But there's that ADD power at work. I, I will say, the more I use my model, the more attached I get to it, though. 
and all the cute wiggles. If you guys haven't seen Darlarian's adorable bush, is made in the same model, mom, that he used for what Blob D version one, the wonderful Blob by Marinki Art. If you have not seen Marinki's stuff, you're missing out. It's got the cozy, cute pastel vibes. <laughs> D is just a character. Are we not all just characters? Be it in our own worlds or online? Consider for a moment. Consider for a moment. We wear many masks when we're out in public. There's a mask you wear for work. There's a mask you wear for school. And sometimes there's a mask you wear when you're around friends that you're not entirely comfortable with. Being a character is just a perception of how much of yourself you're willing to be around people. It's rare that we find, you know, the people that we can be our true weird self with. But he is trying to let more of that out, to showcase more of the weird, <laughs> to just go right ahead and be these authentic selves more often if possible. Do we no longer get uh, XP for Using a pickaxe on rocks? Is that no longer a skill that XP's? Uh, you get mining XP, but you don't get the uh, level XP. Unless you're mining, like, uh, coal, iron, or any of those things. Oh, okay. Maybe we should go and mine a bit just to get one level so you can repair a few of your gear boots. Uh, do you have a sword? D does have a sword, yeah. But it's almost a uh, if you TP to me, no. okay. I'm at a little, little uh, skeleton spawner getting my stuff repaired. <laughs> it is a safe environment. You shouldn't get hit unless oh. you're standing in a corner. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And then you can repair some stuff. We'll go transfer. Seven layers of sarcasm. <laughs> so where is this thing? Alright, so you basically just stand right here. Stand right. Now am I invisible to you again? Hang on. Yeah. Okay, stand away. Yep, and then, uh, then you just hit them in the ankles. <laughs> you stab them in the ankles? Yep. Okay. Stab them in ankles. Stab them in ankles. Thank you. This is very helpful and will let you be able to, uh, what's the word? Clear her gear? Repair the uh, gear? And if you need any arrows, uh, this chest here. <gasps> he does not have a bow. Uh, those are in the furthest chest over here. <laughs> so seven layers with a bean dip. Why do you have bean dip on your face? You did a murder! <laughs> Why do you have bean dip? Because bean dip's the Hooray! <laughs> have you ever, um, heard... Okay, so if you have not been on these... Twitch streams, you haven't heard the rant about tacos. So, D, once upon a time, wanted to be a dietitian and work in research based dietetics, which is where you um, research food and then implement food as medicine. D's just gonna do this until her sword breaks, is that okay? Oh, uh, yeah. Until sword breaks. And then we can have levels to fix equipment. Thank you so much. But so B wanted to it shows you the beans. You must prepare your heart. Yes, exactly. You must prepare yourself. <laughs> so uh, B actually getting pulled up on your ass. Wanted to do studies about how to utilize food as medicine. And D, because of this, watches a lot of my um dietitian based uh how do you how do you explain lots of dietitian based nonsense mm. they will be beam them beam them beam. oh the beam's not working why does the beam not not work maybe we'll just smash them. beam it does not work we just smack. We just smack. 
they're growing outwards. Should you worry? Nah, Beam. nah. Beam does not work. Uh, if you're used to this for Tappy. Ooh, use a what? Thank you. Holy cow, that's way too powerful. Why would you trust D with this? Okay, here, you can have it back. What is this? Oh, a weird rock. There you go. How does D get back up to the surface? Uh, do backslash home. Or you climb out and you'll end up near my old house. <laughs> oh, it did not work. Home? Home? Uh, it'll be home, space, whatever you have home set to. Home, Christmas, bed? What? Home? Oh yeah, we have that Christmas thing. <laughs> it's not working. Uh oh. How about to the the, the base? <laughs> the murder was required so that D could repair her gear. Requirement murder. <laughs> it, it should just be backslash home space then whatever the Mm, how about teleport? It, it, it might be your bed. How to town spawn? Here, he'll just go back to town spawn. Thank you very much. So, the the taco rant, the bean discussion, the moral of all that was, D was following a particular blog, blogger, and dietetic post about the signs of beans and you should have more of them in your day you should have more beans because beans are so good for you and we had a discussion about why tacos hurt you <laughs> because you're weak no because you don't get enough fiber so if you go to like like taco bell the reason that taco bell might hurt you is because you are not used to that much fiber Taco Bell could be considered a diet food. Isn't that weird? Because it is one of the cheapest sources of protein and fiber you can find in the world of fast food. So like Chipotle, taco places, if you go for good old Mexiki, like from an actual restaurant, the sit down type, oh my god, so good. Beans are so good for you and you should have them with more meals because they are one of the cleanest proteins on the planet that are still Hello, mostly Odie. untouched by... Oh, hi, Kylan! You tried to type Pog? Oh, no! <laughs> Just taking away your emotes. If we can get... um, What is it? We're now down to 500 more watch hours. Then D can open up memberships and we will give you guys cute emotes here too, okay? Taco Bell. You meant $12 taco box? Yeah! But D is justifying if you have a taco uh, love for tacos. They're very good for you. It's one of the cheapest forms of protein on the market, and beans themselves are one of the most untouched types of protein when it comes to, like, GMO. So GMO happens for a couple reasons. Do you guys know what GMO is? Have you ever heard of GMO when you've, like, looked at food labels? It's over. $20. Curse you inflation. No, no, it doesn't have to be over. It doesn't have to be over. Billiam Rungle Yellowhammer. Your name sounds like a dwarvic warrior, and he loves it. Get your olives. Mmm, olives are great. But like, friggin' fraggin' froggin' froggin'. Uh, GMO, so genetically modified. It's like object or organic material. Organism is what the O probably stands for. That is actually a normal occurrence for food. Yeah, we've been, thank you to the organism, we've been genetically modifying our food for years because we've been adjusting the plants to make them less disease res like susceptible. We've been making it so that the plants didn't need as much water or so that the plants could survive in areas and produce fruit where they normally couldn't so that we could still have food sources. Genetically modified does not necessarily mean that they have made it so your food is unhealthy. It is speeding up a process that was naturally occurring in the plants for most part. The beans, lentils, legumes, the whole shebang, are one of the most untouched sources for, for GMO 
manufacturing because by their nature beans are incredibly resilient they will grow almost anywhere they are the kind of vining plant that will choke out most other plants <laughs> so if you plant beans prepare for them to be like the mafia and hold your other plants hostage they're holding the legume ek mak they're holding your the nutrients ransom and you gotta pay up to the the legume mafia you want flowers? Too bad? Beans. Only beans. <laughs> Bean Force X. <laughs> very much so. So they are a very strong plant. And they're a wonderful source of protein and fiber. They are a super plant. Go pay your bean tax. You want beans? Here we go. We will have a bean. Here you go. <laughs> Get a pot for some homegrown. Homegrown black beans are so good. So Dee also has farm experience. Dee used to um, work on these cousins, Scott and Jacqueline's farm, every summer and every spring when Dee was in high school. And so Dee has hand-tended a lot of vegetables and fruit trees. And they, they only grew beans in like little patches. It's one of the only produces that they did not mass produce. Like they would do soybeans for animal feed and beans are wonderful because when you grow them they actually give back to the soil they are a they are a wonderful crop to grow in a field off season so if you normally grow a cash crop you would when you're letting the field rest and rejuvenate grow a different plant there that gives back to the soil toe beans are the best source of fiber and have happy chemicals so you should have your beans everywhere. Visit your Turkish supermarket? Heck yeah! Dried legumes are good. You can just soak them and have them ready to cook for any meal. So the moral of this was, do not feel guilty if you go out for taco night. In fact, get more tacos. Because tacos, beans in general, are one of the best, cheapest sources of protein that you're, you can find in today's economy. And if you're like, no, I can't have tacos, they destroy my stomach. That actually just means you need to have them more often. Yeah. This is not sponsored by Taco Bell, but if Taco Bell wants to sponsor D, let's talk. <laughs> you need them more often. If eating high fibrous foods hurts you, it means your body's just not ready yet to handle that level of fight. It's just too much and your body can't handle it. So you must give it an opportunity to heal. Okay. Just let it heal. Yes. Yay, these pickaxes is fixed. But he is out of diamonds. Where did the rest of the diamonds go? He had like 20. Hopefully someone used them for a good purpose. And made themselves something else. Could have sworn you had more of this Let's talk about it. <laughs> Ina reference spotted, goaded in chat. Doesn't take a while to cook beans for homemade burritos. Yeah, it's okay to buy canned. Canned's still cheap. You can soak the beans the night before or do like a prep day and cook them on the weekend. And that will absolutely make it easier to, to cook them faster. They're one of those foods that you can prep and then keep sealed in Tupperware or freeze them to enjoy for a long while afterwards. Deadbeat reporting, let's go. Did any of you guys get to enjoy the live cast of Fest that happened over the past weekend? Love seeing all of the adorable posts. Dee did not get to engage in Hollow Fest, but Dee has been vicariously living off of people's posting. The music supposedly was just so good. People were screaming and crying and dying. You too? Okay, good on me. You too, you too. You watched it all so good. Man, their 3D lives just go so hard. You can tell that they spend their money and their time and effort to make sure that their talents get good things. There are not many companies that take such good care of their people in the big company place 
we've heard a lot of scary things in the news. And it's nice to know that Hollow Live still produces such great stuff for their talents. This shows that they care. The fact that they invest in them. More people deserve that kind of an experience. To be invested in properly. You can only really grow when you're put in an environment where those limitations are released from you. It is funny, he thinks, to see so many different organizations popping up that believe, I will just go and hire some cute girls to produce content, they will do it all on their own, and they will make me rich. There's so much that goes on in the background when it comes to creating and content in general. You have to do your thumbnails, you have to schedule your content, you have to keep your eyes on what's doing good and what's not doing well. You have to try different medium until you find your niche. You have to experiment with this and you have to schedule collaborations. You have to be good at networking and you have to be good at managing all of this and your time. It, it is a challenge and it's not for everybody. Oh, thank you, dollar bill. The dollar bill that you dropped on the floor has returned to you. Thank you, he loves you too, sweet. Thank you. Have a smooch for your adorable little super chat. You love how they keep evolving the show? Yes, Megan, they do a dance number. And then Corona's evolving flip mechanics. She's gonna be flying next year. Trust that Doge will be able to fly. You sat through Kali, Bay, Iris and Bay singing the Lolly God Requiem. Oh yeah, that was so good. That song both makes T laugh and it's also incredibly impressive because it's quick syllables. Not so much that it's going to be tongue twister, but it's a good introduction to very, very, very fast singing that not a lot of people could do while dancing at the same time. That takes breath power a pre lung appreciation post. <laughs> Candid lung appreciation for people who are triple threats, who can sing, dance, and act. Practicing the backwards long jump from Mario 64. <laughs> Darlene, did you watch any of the stuff from Fess? Uh, not, not too much. <laughs> no, none of the capture the moment. Are there things that you're going to maybe go back and enjoy? Are you a Hollow Life fan? Uh, there, there's definitely things I'm going to go back and enjoy. Yeah. This but I don't know if the VODs for the fest are up yet or not. They haven't dropped the VODs yet. They're still online on one of the one of the platforms, but not all of them. Not all of them are available. Perhaps. Perhaps soon. Perhaps soon. <laughs> Wonder how they're going to one-up it next year. Because... Is he no longer... Hang on. Is Dee no longer in her town? Where is Dee? Oh, Dee's in a chunk not claimed. Oh, we can't claim it. Shoot. Oh, yeah, I think our town ran out of money. We ran out of money, so Dee will have to get to the mine and get money to obtain monies. What's the best way to get money in Rento? Uh, Combat you need to rental? get a bunch of copper. Okay. And... And sell that to a vendor in town, along with a bunch of uh, produce. Uh, mm -hmm. I I choose pumpkins. Ooh. And sell them. Which why there's that. In the main SMP town. Yes. Ooh. And then there's also one for monster drops. That one's a bit harder to do, but that's also why I have the uh, slime spawner at my base. Ooh. Just selling a whole bunch of slime balls. <laughs> we have some monster drops that pro probably could be sold. Oh. And the other one is selling coins that you get from the uh, dungeons. Ooh. And each one of those you can make $5,000 a day. Nice! Ooh, okay. Not, not in-game day, but actual day. <laughs> actual, real-world days. We have some, like, bones and things that could probably be sold for this purpose. Hmm. Yeah, the, the, the monster one takes a lot to max that out, because they're all fairly cheap. Ooh. Okay, this is good to know. Let's see. There is an empty sandbox. Too much sand. 
so much sand. Just gotta clear the sand. Do you have a box for miscellaneous? Used to be one of these boxes up here. This will just be over here. I'm just going to have some gold. Every box is for miscellaneous. <laughs> Charge people to see the beans? <laughs> no, beans are earned. You've fallen behind on your big stream watching? It is. Okay, there are so many cuties out on the internet. It's getting hard to support them all. D has realized that it is impossible to support them all and give them the love and affection they deserve. So D is choosing to find like her group of maybe 10, 10 cuties, and then supporting them as much as possible. Especially if they plan a hiatus, they need even more support because when you go on hiatus, the biggest fear is that taking that break will make you fall out of the public view and lose your community. Truly loyal communities, you don't have to worry about this. But there are some creators who are still very small and when they take a break, it can be very damaging to them because taking a break means that they're losing visibility and they need every opportunity they can to grow. One of the nice things afforded to you when you get bigger, and that's not D by any means, but you can feel a little less lucky or less um, guilty taking a break. And it makes you more capable of producing good content. There's lots of things you have to balance as a creator, but D has chosen to support her small group of friendos in their growth and their content dreams because D likes spending time with them and they make you happy. It's one thing to support new cuties in the community. It's another to find lasting friendships. And that is what Dee is going for. <laughs> like the other day, Dee actually saw Entity in another cuties chat because Dee was looking for a stream to chill on because all of these friends were offline. And uh, Dee learned of what's her name? Dev? Devani? She's like a, a deer. Not a deer. A deer? Is she a deer? He has no idea. He's gonna have to look back. She was playing Legend of Zelda, which is one of one of these favorite series. You will nerd out endlessly about Legend of Zelda. Oh dear. D stands for the desert. Yes. We are nothing but sand. It's very dry. <laughs> He's trying to clear this mound away. Once this mound is cleared, a deer will save that wall for another day. But we will begin the building of the temple and then the mining. The mining. Yeah. Coarse, rough, irritating, gets everywhere. Is that how D makes you feel? <laughs> Is D coarse, rough, and does D get everywhere? Well, dang. It's okay. D thought that D was soft and fluffy, but I guess D will have to try harder. <laughs> Switch got Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Yes! I wish that they would port over and or re-release physical copies of the good old Zelda games. And by good old, D means the origin of D's own beloved Zelda lores. The Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, uh, Skyward Sword they already did a re-release on and it's good. But friggin' Twilight Princess, throw those in a new engine with new graphics and new balancing. Oh my goodness, D would just die in the half <laughs> I think my older brother has the uh, original NES that we still have the uh, the like, gold Legend of Zelda uh, game cartridge. <laughs> D had a gold th for the N64 way back when D was a teeny tiny. D had the gold edition of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, but D was convinced to sell them by Evil Mother. Little did you know how much they would miss them in the future. Oh. You know, they did get a 3D release, but it was on a handheld system. D wanted to see Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask get a re-release on like, a console. Because, let's face it, yes, you can take the Switch everywhere, but aside from maybe bringing it to school with you, 
uh, D wants to be able to sit down and enjoy the full experience of the Zelda games on a big, big, big screen. Like, the most... That's a good way to put it. The moments of Zelda that have stuck with D the most, that have just made D the happiest, are moments like those in Breath of the Wild, when you play it for the first time. Stepping out onto the Great Plateau and seeing that on a huge screen was so cinematically beautiful. It filled D with so much unbridled joy. And D wouldn't trade that to a handheld version at all ever. There's something about being surrounded by the visuals and the audio that just made that experience so much more immersive. You're the opposite, you only play the Switch in handheld mode. Do you do that for like specific games? But also D doesn't get to game as much as D would like and D needs to game more on the PC because democracy calls and D has been neglecting her weekly dose of democracy. He's gonna basically be a traitor at this point against the bug infection. This is, this is horrible. Treason is You switch, haha, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Between TV monitor and handheld mode. There's lots of different ways that you can enjoy gaming. It's nice to see how gaming has evolved over the past few years. And how it's so much more inclusive of different people. We failed the major order. No! Okay, D needs to go and do her part. The bugs! The bugs are everywhere. We must do our part. D hasn't been doing her part. You can be like, I did my part. I did my part. D didn't do. <laughs> I need a re release for D's favorite Zelda games, the CDI ones. <laughs> Just Ocarina of Time, complete with the original voices by Hijan. He's still D's favorite. Nobu Yama is still D's favorite male voice actor ever. D believes he does not get the roles that he is suited for, though. He's been cast as so many villains the past, like, five years. It's like, is that what you want? Hijan, is that what you want? You can do so much more. You're the friggin' hero of time! Why are you settling for the role of a villain? Then again, the role of the villain is more vocally challenging. To be a hero, you just need one voice. To be a villain, you get to have a myriad of flavors, and the drama voice is very satisfying to do, so who knows? Everyone who does voice acting goes through their phase, of which is their favorite voice. You hate using the Switch in handheld? Wait, really? Why? Everything's too small. And become specs on the screen. Mmm. Yeah, visuals also play a part. <laughs> What's linked to Fall to Darkness? <gasps> so there is a side fan. It's not really a fan fiction, but there's fan theories. If you've stuck around with D long enough to know that D is just a massive nerd and probably needs help, <laughs> uh, there's some lovely fan theories about Shadow Link and about Fierce Deity. And some of them are supported by game mechanics, some of them are not. And you would love to see more of an exploration of Hi ladies, welcome! Of more of that in Zelda games. There is lots of potential. Oh, and there goes another one of these. There have been only a few times when this stuff was explored that people tried to make sense of the mirror world link and or fierce deities origin of the mask we know from Majora's mask that all of those masks had some kind of a background story that each and every mask created in Majora's mask was from something it was born from the suffrage of one creature shape or another. So then, what is the true origin of the Fierce Deities mask? You're introduced to it, and it is claimed that it is got trapped the soul of a very bad spirit of some kind, or that the Fierce Deity mask 
house is a great evil, and you get to be the bad guy in that fight, supposedly, when you are fighting Majora's Mask at the end. So what is the great evil behind the mask? Ooh. Pokemon and Warframe on the Switch? Pokemon on the Switch. It was made for the Switch. Pokemon and Mario are probably Nintendo's true staples at this point. Like, Tears of the Kingdom was sort of a hit or miss for the community as a whole. Zelda theories are wild, but there's a lot of cool stuff that is now canon. Like the Zonai, there have been hints about the Zonai civilization in Zelda games for years before they actually put them into a game. There were hints way back in games on handheld systems for Zelda, and some of the biggest were in like Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. It's cool to see them digging into the fan theories and the things that people pick up from the Hyrulean Historian Guild, where people have pieced these puzzle pieces together and it's like okay which story is real and which one's not which ones were left as red herrings to allow us more speculation into the universe suffrage keep wor using this word you don't think you know what it means what does suffrage mean is it not just to suffer big big suffering dar is big evil <laughs> how is dar evil look at this bush and tell me it is evil Darlene, are you secretly the evil mastermind? Should we fear the bush? Ah, I've been outed. <laughs> <laughs> you shall all fear the name Darth Lyrian. Darth Lyrian. No, Darth Lyrian, no! <laughs> There's a big potential for fable-like story where Link could make real choices. Ooh. Okay. Have you heard... Um, so there was a YouTube creator who did this on a big episode. But most of the Legend of Zelda games have... The thing that really captured Dee's heart with them is that they're all very sad in a realistic way. And they don't outright state, this is the sad part of the game. It's quiet and subtle, like someone would realistically be expected to feel hurt, pain, and sad. And for the Legend of Zelda games, each one of the games, you are going through and experiencing a different level of profound grief and suffering along with the main character, which is Link, if you think about it. So let's take the recent games, for example. Recent games being uh, like Twilight, Princess. No, let's go to, let's just go to the most recent. Let's go um, Breath of the Wild. In Breath of the Wild, what you're suffering through is loss. You've lost your memories of the past and you've lost friends and friendship that you made in a lifetime that you've forgotten and never truly get back. Loss is the theme, the sad part of Breath of the Wild. Loss and then through Princess Zelda, you're actually experiencing a different level of that, that sad. You are experiencing not feeling like you are ever enough, being regretting your very existence and wanting to be something that no one else wants you to be. So basically, the challenge of having a passion and yet having a life that has been set out for you are some of the things that you are dealing with in these two most recent games. Let's go a little further back and you can look at Majora's Mask, which is very blatantly loss in the sense of like grief, death, and coming to term with the different phases of grief. And that one time span between Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time was thousands of years. Yeah. If you think about it, Ocarina of Time, when you look at the different types of loss, grief, and sadness that you are helping the main characters cope with in the different Legend of Zelda series, Ocarina of Time is probably the saddest of them all. So you have people who have lost friends, and you're dealing with grief, 
in most of the other games. And you get to help them heal and make new connections with their descendants in the most recent games. In Ages and Seasons, you're also helping to heal the world from the dark evil. And in that, Link is just like a member of the community who ends up getting recruited to help with all of this. In Wind Waker, it's not so much loss as you're just trying to save your little sister. But then in the process of saving your sister in Wind Waker, you become so much more. And you realize that you've been changed by the experience, or Link does, and thus he sets out to explore more with Petra and the pirate crew, which leads to those subsequent games. Because you now have a taste for adventure. Ocarina of Time is probably the saddest Zelda game in the history of Zelda games. Because not only are you dealing with a main character who doesn't belong anywhere, and this was something that resonated with D when D was very small. D was one of those people, maybe maybe you are too, who always felt like you were a little different and you never really felt like you belonged anywhere. Where you tried your best to mask and fit in, but no matter the friends that you made or the places you went, you never really found what felt like home. Link is in a forest among people he will never fit in with the the Kukiri children and if you listen to the lore which is also echoed in the manga you're given the story of a war that broke out in Hyrule which was likely caused by the Gerudo factions warring for peace as part of this war a Hylian woman leapt into the forest which was poisoned the Kokiri forest is poisoned to Hylians by nature and she ran there for safety, seeking sanctuary from her for her child. Her husband was a soldier and was killed in this war for Hyrule. But she ran to the great Deku tree, who led her there and opened doorways in the woods for her to not be lost. And she's like, please keep my child safe. Sensing something was very important about this child, the great Deku tree takes Link and protects them, gives them the protection of the forest so that the poison they are living in will not kill the child. But in doing so, Link's mother sacrifices her life to save her son. And she does perish in the forest. And the decoratory warns her, he's like, you've come here, you can't leave. She's like, I know, but save my baby. So Link grows up in a world where he was never supposed to exist. In. And Link is a character who always wanted to be a boy with a fairy, just like the rest, but never would be. And the one time that he gets to fit in, he has to leave. When the great decoratory sends Navi, his literal only friend, who knows him as the boy who doesn't really have a fairy, and who goes with him throughout his entire adventure, he meets her when he has to leave. He doesn't even get to relish having those moments of finally fitting in. He doesn't even get to keep that. The moment he becomes what he has always wanted to be, a boy with a fairy, he has to leave that behind. Saria is kind of his friend, but through their interactions, it, you can you get the vibe that it's more pity than actual friendship. Saria doesn't really visit Link. She doesn't hang out with Link much, and she still hides their friendship whenever they interact with the other Kokiri. What kind of a friend hides your friendship? There is still that layer of you don't really belong, and there's that layer of separation. While she was nicer to Link than the others, don't know if she was ever really a friend. Because what kind of a friend would still leave you all on your own and on your lonesome? the way that Sarya did. Only when he was outside of the village would they play together. So consider that one. D loves Sarya as a character and as the one who introduced Link to music. But as a friend, he's not so sure she was the very best of friend. And she probably could have been better to Link. To the point where he had confidence that it was okay to not have a fairy. Real friends build you up and don't build upon your insecurities. So. She taught him her song. 
She only taught her friends that song. So she said, there was no one else who knew her song. And that song was something she kept within her as a sage of the forest. You would learn later that her, her songs are the music is her magic, basically, as a sage. And she would be awakened as a reborn sage in the forest. So that's part one of the saddest thing in Zelda games, in Ocarina of Time, that Link is a sad existence just because Link will never belong. And then Link goes out into the world of Hylians. Being a boy who was raised in the forest, he's already being looked at as a crazy weirdo. He doesn't fit in with their world either. And then he meets Princess Zelda, who basically recruits him to help her. They have a small friendship that blossoms in the very beginning. And he is introduced to her and she still thinks he's a weirdo, but he helps her out. And that becomes what could have been friendship until it is taken away from him by her kidnapping, by her needing to run away to escape Ganondorf, by Impa taking her away for safety. And then he is forced to put himself into the body of someone seven years older than him. Link transcends time and doesn't get to grow up normally. Link has the mentality of an 11 year old child when he saves Hyrule. And then at the very end of that, he has now killed people and killed monsters. And yes, he is a hero, but murder, whether it be for the sake of good or evil, leaves a mark on you that you never get rid of. And then, Zelda's like, I'm sorry, I'll send you back to your time so you can have the childhood you never got to have. But how could he ever be a normal child? Ever. Ever. He still has the memories of having taken life. He still has the memories of the world that would come. And those would basically give this poor boy PTSD for the foreseeable future. So now we have Link, who is put back into the body of a child who goes to, at the very end of Ocarina of Time, the castle to warn Zelda so that those events don't come to pass. And you see at the altar in the glass cutscene, and it is reiterated in the manga, what, what Navi is saying to him. So Navi, the only character who has been with Link throughout this entire thing says, hey, I know how you're feeling right now. I can only imagine but I've been here with you the whole time and you don't have to stay here. Go say your goodbyes. I will meet you in the forest. And then we can just leave this place together and start somewhere fresh. Navi, when you first play the game, for the very, very, very first time, is an indispensable asset to you. Navi is the character who keeps you alive when you don't know what the hell you're doing. And she might be annoying and memed in later iterations of playthroughs but she is Link's only friend and she's the only one who stays with Link through his entire journey in Ocarina of Time. Everyone else just asks for Link's help and the fairy though it can't do anything stays with him. Yes she cowers in his hat sometimes but she's still there when nobody else is. So then we have Link going to say his goodbyes. However the great Deku tree is dead. The great Deku tree cannot give Link the protection of the forest anymore. So Link and Navi part ways at the altar of time. The moment Link steps back into this world at the altar of time, they make a great mistake. And Link, having lost the protection of the forest because the guardian is dead, goes to do the right thing and tell Princess Zelda, okay, uh, this is what's going to happen, that Ganondorf guy is bad, so that they can stop what happens before it does. And his fairy companion doesn't know what's about to occur, and doesn't know that he has lost that ability for protection of the forest, and says, hey, go say your goodbyes, I'll meet you in the forest. 
Then Link goes to try and find them. When Link's mother brought Link as a baby into the forest, Link's mother did not have the protection and would be lost and die from the poison in the forest. Link has since been inoculated to the poison in the forest. So Link will not perish, but Link, as so many others after and before Link, becomes lost in the lost woods. And what is, what are you throwing at me? In a sense, yeah. She brought Link there to be safe. And Link was allowed to live in the forest. A pickaxe? Don't you? Did you pick it up? Oh, thank you for mending that! Thank you so much! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank you! That's so kind. So now Link, having lost the protection of the forest, goes to try to find his friend. And what happens? He gets lost in the Lost Woods. He and Epona wander the Lost Woods and they will never find Navi. Link will wander until he wanders into Termina in the events of Majora's Mask. Link will likely be in Termina, and here's the other fan theory, that Link is in Termina coming to terms with Link's death, that Link turns into a Stalfos and dies in the Lost Woods, and later is the hero that you meet in Twilight Princess. Tingle is not these favorite character, but good try. <laughs> and that is one of the primary reasons why Ocarina of Time is the saddest Legend of Zelda game. Because... No, he does not love Snot Boy. <laughs> because Link will never belong. The Link will save the world and then come back to it being alone. Only... Only to have to leave it all again and suffer. Something cool from the mythos of Twilight Princess, though, is... For those of you who do not know, uh, wolves have some interesting side mythology. And when you're playing Twilight Princess, there's a lot of wolf stuff everywhere. Lots and lots of wolf stuff everywhere. When you meet the traveling, uh, what is it, the soldier? The, the Stalfos soldier who teaches you the hidden techniques, you first go through the white wolf where he was remembered but not present in the Wind Waker time. Link was forgotten in a lot of places. Tingle is a great character. His two games, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Not a good character. Not based at all. Tingle can die in a fire. <laughs> Tingle, die in a fire. <laughs> so, Link, in... Twilight Princess, if you've noticed all the wolf stuff, there is some fan mythos around wolves. So there is, uh, what is it? Is it Grico or Roman? The origin of this? Can't recall. But the wolf god of the hunt is also related to an Okami spirit. So there is two conflicting mythos here. One is Japanese and one is either Grecian or Roman. But there is a wolf spirit that, similar to Valkyrie mythos, looks for courageous spirits of deceased warriors, and it collects them for the hunt, and basically turns them into wolf spirits, and they run with this god of the hunt um, onwards and infinitely, enjoying the freedom of the hunt in the way that they could not have while they were alive. And this cross mythos is one of the fan theories that was used to explain why there's all this wolf stuff and not just a phase for Shigeru when they created the Twilight Princess wolf stuff. That what happens to Link is while Link is wandering the Lost Woods, um, this Okami spirit takes a liking to Link, knowing that they are a hero who transcended time and space. And they're like, I like you. I think you're pretty cool, bro. 
um, join my pack and they give them the choice and they take it, which is why they are able to join the hunt. And they are then this white wolf spirit, which is the Stalfos they turned into. It is all these things and combined, it is the spirit of Link that they will never die and they continue to wander space and time enjoying the hunt and it was what allowed Link to pass on their skills. So there's some pretty cool fan mythos mixed with actual mythos and little tidbits of these stories can be seen in the manga retelling and there's all this hidden lore inside the actual Zelda games themselves. One of the reasons Dee loves the Zelda universe is that they never close up all of those beautiful plot holes and that there will always be room for speculation and fan theorizing. And now we have seen in recent events that the community, the fan community of the Zelda games, all of their theories are being looked at by the actual developers and being incorporated into games. So it's cool to see what might come next. Kirsin, thank you, thank you. Kirsin, thank you. This is the god that that's based off of. It is German and Celtic. Thank you. It's all G words in Dee's brain. Dee needs to get her mythos straight. Hmm. You should hear Dee's little sister talk about myth legend. She actually has um, a minor in Greek history. She can speak a little Greek. <gasps> Do you guys want to meet Dee's little sister? Dee's thinking of asking her to stream with you. <laughs> what does he think of Midna? That's my wife. <laughs> Darlirian, have you played Twilight Princess? I have not actually played a Zelda game. <gasps> no! Since uh, the Super Nintendo. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. Zelda is not for everyone if you are not huge on like RPGs. D is just a Zelda nerd. Please forgive D her rants. <laughs> D cannot help it. D is a massive Zelda. Midna is D's wife. D has an amiibo of Midna riding Wolf Link. She is so beautiful that D has no words. D loves that she is such a cutie. D loves that she is unabashedly herself. And D loves her sassy energy. That is D's wife. That is D's Nintendo console games are out of my reach. Come on, you're taller than me. You can reach them. You can reach. You can reach. <laughs> Deep in the short stack pipeline. Have you seen Midna? She is hot. <laughs> that impish grin. You know she's gonna shenaniganate. Like there ain't no business shenaniganating. Twilight was actually Shay's first. Oh, that was your first Legend of Zelda experience? Ooh, you got you got the good character development. You only missed out on the games that would prepare you for the puzzles. That is all. Whee! Chopping into the side. But D wife, you'll have to let me know if D is wife when D becomes a giant whammon. It's hard to say that a cat adjacent creature is wife material though, because if you were to introduce D to your mother and say, this is my wife, she'd be like, we need to talk about why it's not okay <laughs> to spend that much time with animals. <laughs> she would be very concerned. You don't understand, mom. <laughs> you don't understand, it's not a phase, mom. She'd be like, honey, I want to be accepting of you. Is this what they call being a fur? <laughs> <laughs> That's what would happen, guys. Uh, yes, furries. Furries are beautiful people. They're always like smart, capable individuals too. One of these best of friendos, um, they came out as a furry when we were in high school. And what do they do now? Uh, they are non-binary and they build planes for the military. They are a gloriously capable engineer. <laughs> It's really cool. They're, they're a fursuiter too, and they go to conventions and they're... Oh God, it's so cool what they create. It's really neat. Love to see all of the engineering prowess that goes into fursuits. 
to make that fuzzy thing so comfortable that you can wear it for hours and hours and to just be true to your animal self is kind of impressive. If D was Link, would that make Pidge Ganon? No, Pidge is not epic enough to be Ganon. There is another entity. That would be D's Ganon. You'll learn about that in lore one day. <laughs> you can be furry all you want. Your heart is what is important. Exactly. Hello! Oh, you're a scaly! Let's go! So, you are aware of Vexy, yes? D's other wife. <laughs> D loves Vexy and Zolon as creators on Twitch. They are a wonderful representation of a good, healthy relationship that D thinks we need, we need more of on the internet. To see that it's okay to express certain things with your significant other. They are relationship goals. <laughs> goals! For some reason, fursuits unsettle you? Oh, some of them, D could, D could see that. Because D is not a huge fan of the childlike suits. It has a little bit of the uncanny valley aspects. But the realism in certain suits is also... Is very appealing and artistic. He likes that. One of what's her name? Can't remember. There's a female first suitor he knows of. She is a bear, and she is a belly dancer, and she makes her character look like an anime bear girl, and she uses belly dancing regalia as part of the costume. It's really cool. <laughs> Love is awesome. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. So maybe when D transforms, D will be more wife And not so much. Maybe D can have a mid in a moment. Maybe D can work that into debut. And by so beautiful, you have lost, you have no words to speak. <laughs> maybe D can release her full saucy sassiness. <laughs> Sounds like something you could bear. Ayy! So, Darlene, you have not played Zelda games. What kind of games do you enjoy streaming the most? Let's learn of the lore of Valyrian. Valyrian. Uh, do you have a preference? I, I, I'd play a large variety of games. Yeah? Have you found the ones that you enjoy streaming the most? You're still in your experimental phase too, so that's that is just fine. Yeah. <laughs> you need to dump it again. Well, I am waiting for a handful of games to come out to stream those ones too. I got oh, yeah? Earth Defense Force Six. Earth Defense Force. <laughs> it's the other giant bug shooter. Black <laughs> aliens. Giant. <laughs> there is a pattern of giant bug shooty games. The obsession and the obsessive need to shoot bug for democracy is real. Democracy is real. Yep, the Earth Defense Force games do it in a way though that reminds you of a very bad like eighties B movie. <laughs> there are so many wild eighties movies out there. Oh, can you remember? There's one in particular that whenever he thinks of like the worst uh B movies he's ever heard of. There's one that stands out in particular, but he can never remember the name. Basically, maybe if he tells you about it, you will know the name. It's pretty infamous. The name, the the movie itself, was directed by and starred the same individual. And there's a sequel to it. And one of these movies, he's like eating cans of tuna. And we don't know why, and he's supposed to be some super secret spy, but he's very bad at being a super secret spy. Uh, a giant scene in the movie that has nothing to do with anything is literally him floating face down and completely naked in a pool. <laughs> it's so stupid. And the, the camera angles are the most wild, ridiculous things ever. Why does he sound like me for real, for real? EDF? Is it EDF? Hang on. No. It is not. What is it? Hang on. It is B movie. It is so campy. 
Um, starring and directing. Starring, directing, same actor. Written and directed and starring the same person. No. Um, let's see. Tuna. Neil Breen! Neil Breen is the man. It is Neil Breen. Neil Breen wrote and created the film's fateful finding where he's supposed to be a hacker imbued with supernatural Jesus powers by a magical stone that he finds as a child and he uses his skills to expose a government and corporate corruption. And then he plays a CIA agent in his other movie, Double Down. It is the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> do you know who Neil Breen is? I do not. Okay, you're not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the wildest trip you will ever interact with. If, if you ever look up Neil Breen, don't say you weren't warned. <laughs> You've seen clean? Yes, it is so awful. You've seen clips? It is really bad. It is horrendous beyond words, but it's so bad it's funny. Neil Breen's movies are the kind of movies that you get together with a group of friends and you've been staying up way too late and you're all like goofy, silly, slap happy the whole time and you watch these movies. <laughs> that is the kind of experience that just makes it the best. The dialogue. Can you go... go ahead, go ahead. That's the kind that you go full uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yes. It's so bad. The Neil Breen movies are the kind that maybe D should consider having a watch along for. <laughs> they're so bad. They're so bad. <laughs> but they're like so bad, it's kind of funny. You you can't not like enjoy. It is an experience. D doesn't think that it's an experience everyone should have, but it's definitely an experience. <laughs> it is a thing. It is a thing that exists. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes you just find a movie that's so bad, it's legendary bad. So bad, it is the stuff of legend. So bad, it. D wouldn't call it good. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> it's just bad just so 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 bad is it like resident evil uh, one voice acting bad oh my goodness resident evil voice acting no yes actually yes it is that bad it is that bad <laughs> he was a, he was thinking of the movies for a moment and he was like no nothing with mila jovovich in it is bad she's basically a goddess and we are just blessed to be borrowing the air that she breathes he doesn't have a problem. He doesn't have a problem. Jill Sandwich. <laughs> the best, the best voice acting, you mean. Resident Evil voice acting, the best. Why, why are the golems stuck in the corner? Why won't they leave? What they is, know what they did. What is so special about this corner that they refuse to leave it? They, they're, they're in timeout. They're in timeout, but why? Who put them there? They know why. They know why? Hopefully they know why, because these sure as heck doesn't know why. Why are you guys in the corner? You can come out of the corner, guys. Is there dudes behind this wall? We're going to have to go kill the dudes behind the wall to get them to leave the wall alone or make the wall thicker? What do we have to do to get them to leave the wall? It is you who has a problem. <laughs> Bottom left? What's on the bottom left? That's where they make their money. <laughs> what do you mean this is where they make their money? Are they are they having like a secret meeting and we're just busting up their hideout? Is this where the cool kids hang out? What are you guys doing over here after school? Your mother would like to know. <laughs> They'll stay in the corner until it rains erodes it away so it's no longer a corner. D is thinking that if D just widens this area, then they will realize they can walk somewhere else. You don't have to stay here, golems. There is plenty of land within which for you to wander. In fact, D would appreciate if you wandered elsewhere to keep us safe 
from the random things that keep spawning here. That is your job. Why are you slacking? <laughs> Maybe they're in the corner because they're cold. Oh, because it's always 90 degrees in the corner. Yep. <laughs> you can also sit next to a computer that's burning a CD as well. That's burning a CD? <laughs> that's what'll make you warm. Burn CDs. Do people burn CDs anymore? D once had... Okay, so D is Demi. And D does not understand the when people flirt with D, so has had very many awkward encounters. And there was this, this friend of D's when D was in high school who gave D a burned CD of a bunch of anime. And they like engraved it. And it had like a special message on it and everything. And Dee was like, wow, you went way over the top. Dee had no idea that they liked Dee at all. And Dee just felt so bad about it. <laughs> Don't give anime CDs to the girl you like or do, but make sure she's not like Dee and can actually get that it is you trying to be more than her. <laughs> You imagine CD Burns would be coming back with how you can't own anything? Facts! It really bothers D that you can't physically own stuff. It's all digital. And most digital media is like getting rid of their stuff. She gave me a CD, bro. That means she likes you. That's how you know yeah, she likes you. That is one reason I like my Nintendo Switch. I try to get the physical copies for all the games I have. Mm. D has tried to get a whole bunch of physical games. D now regrets getting digital games for many things that no longer exist. <coughs> we, <coughs> they just they don't exist anymore. And now that D can pick up the things that D loves, and they are collector's edition, and they cost a lot of money. <laughs> Who said you couldn't get rich collecting your favorite video games? They were wrong. They were wrong. D <laughs> is D physical media. Uh, when D creates a plushie and a Daki Makura cover, then D can be a form of physical media. Also, if you meet D at Ofkai, then D is physical but not media and is just physical. <laughs> Darlarian, would you cosplay yourself as a bush? <laughs> I most definitely would. <laughs> How would you do it? Would you do it like one of the giant like Pokemon costumes like the Kigurumis? Probably. <laughs> that would be so cool. Imagine the giant bush walking around convention. <laughs> Even trying to find the Game Boy SP. It's a website that makes retro consoles nice. You can actually emulate those like Raspberry Pi style and make your own. And there's tutorials for it. Yeah. It's stupid to want to have physical things, but it's all digital. And yeah, when people remove the media or the site, like Netflix, removing your favorite movies, stupid Netflix, that's why you cancel the subscription. <laughs> or all of the different platforms only having one of the series you want, so you only watch it for that one series, and then they get rid of the series because people were only watching for that one series, and <laughs> they can't make money. D is like beyond levels of unawareness. Is there a word for being unaware and just so unaware it's frightening? That you're just so oblivious? D has this problem. <laughs> whatever that is, whatever the word is, D has that problem. <laughs> D is physical big, but not physical medium. That's right, yeah. Very, very big. You'll meet D and you'll be like, you're a giant. And D will be like, D will squish you now. <laughs> Expect D to be very, 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 very big. Very big, so tall, very big, also very round and big. And you will not be, you will not have your dreams crushed. <laughs> oh no, he doesn't want holes here. Fill the hole. No! Fill the hole. Fill the hole! Right now, D is medium. D can talk to ghosts. Yes! We don't use this power lightly, though. It's dangerous. Okay. You don't run around talking to ghosts like you. You gotta have a reason, otherwise they get pissed. <laughs> That's why you use a spirit guide to talk to them for you. 
so you don't get, you know, cursed or hexed. Only use it to talk to two cute ghost tubers. Wait, two? Anise and who? Anise and who? More cute ghost girls, please. Ghosts are not meant to mess around for fun. Why not? When you're undead and you have nothing better to do, why not? Just go and have fun. Why are these eternally open? What is happening? Uh, if you click on the exit, it should close. It is not letting the interact with the boxes anymore. What the heck? Are um, you right clicking on them? What the heck? Why? Who did this? Don't believe the box is open, you silly goobers. <laughs> D is lagging again? No! No lag! Pain and stuff. <laughs> And, uh, did you did you find the uh, little piece of hidden uh, Darlurian lore over here? Darlurian lore, the full. Where over here? Is it in a box? Where's the box? He is emptying out her inventory because he's too full. Okay, you will come up. Where's the other spot? Wow. Was another spot? Is it here? Yeah. Sand. Let's see where the sand goes. And gravel. Remove the sand from the gravel. Sand goes in the sandbox. Okay, you said there was lore over here? Where is the lore? Plants! They say... Ilarian, Brularian, Chitlarian, and Dar- <laughs> These are so cute! Why are they just sticks? Uh, the other ones, uh, didn't make it. They didn't make it? No! D! Darlarian is a science experiment! <laughs> that is correct. Okay, that's that's actually really cool lore. Secretly a science experiment. My bush can't secretly be a government science experiment! That's so cool. I like it. But D is actually going to be cutting out this area once it is flattened to the maximum, and we will begin landscaping. That's okay, I'm planning on building Lyrian Lab somewhere Lyrian. over that direction. That sounds really cool. Ah! Oh. Who put a hole in here? It's just gonna fill in that hole. He doesn't have enough stones to fill in the hole. Shadow, come out of the hole! <laughs> oh wait, who is this? Who are you who is in the hole? You can't see your name tag. It just says... Say... So yeah, it's Shadowfish. Come out of the hole. <laughs> You're going to be buried in the hole, silly goof. <laughs> Are the golems still lurking over there for no reason? Yep. yep, they're still in the corner. Why are they in the corner? They know why. For science, so many materials. Will we do some? Yes. He is going to take a massive chunk of these materials and they are going to be refined into smooth column-like materials. The sand will be turned into glass. V is going to make a glass and gold and shiny, shiny, shiny block style uh, pyramid temple. And we are going to build it where this current pyramid is, but it will be a little bigger. We're going to landscape the area around and he's going to put like trellis and fancy pillars and plants and waterways we're going to turn it into a proper oasis proper oasis but first we must flatten it we need a canvas upon which to work and it must be flat first. and cats yes you will have to go find cats we'll go on a cat adventure in the future but step one flattening the land which has taken a few streams but we're just about there today and step two, we can probably begin today. 
which will be building the temple. In the future, do you would like to replace the walls with something obscene, like absurd, like very shiny, so maybe make them gold? <laughs> or make them walls of like polished marble or calcite or amethyst? Make them something that glistens in the sunlight. Make it wild. And we'll have to chop down that hill a little bit further because the pyramid is too close to that side. But we'll just build it out. Where are you going, buddy? You finally decided to move away from your corner. Recall hearing Minecraft NPCs have a directional bias to the random movement and will always wind up in a certain direction. Maybe we should put like a tether on them and tether them to different places. Would that keep them? Would that keep them from hiding in the corner? Uh, I'm not sure if you can leash a golem. Can you leash a golem? Oh, he danced. Are you trying to tell D something? Tell D what you want D to know. What do you want? He'll tell you what he wants, what he really, really wants. Tell D what you want. What you really want. What do you want? He wants to go in the hole. You don't need to go in the hole, buddy. You, you really don't. He craves the hole. Come out of the hole. <laughs> Shadow, not you too. Come out of the hole. Come out of the hole, you silly goobers! <laughs> Leash. With walls? Maybe we need to put a bigger, thicker wall here or something? Because they don't seem to want to come away from the wall. Oh, <gasps> doesn't have her horn! We put it in a box somewhere and it has been forgotten after three streams. Very sad. She's dooting in spirit. Dooting in spirit to call and summon friends. Doot, doot. Dee, dee, dee. Doot, doot, doot. And then we will fill in the holes. Fill in the hole, fill in the hole. Don't know where this hole will go. Thank you for filling in the hole. What are you guys doing having a golem party in the corner? Come away. Away. Yep, yep. They're in timeout. Well, who put them in timeout? Me. They know what they did. They know what they did? <laughs> okay. He's glad that they know what they did, because he sure as heck doesn't know what they did to deserve to die. Shh. Alright, we're almost done. Everything's almost cleared out. Wow. Eventually, D wants to chub away more of this wall that D is facing. But... That can come at a later time. It is time to begin landscaping. He would love to put a waterway around the entire property. And then we can start growing some plant stuff here, there, and everywhere. Maybe even make it something that you could take a boat ride through. That would be fun. We need some waterfalls down from that wall, too. To keep the baddies and to add features of green and glory. Strategically placed trees and then places where people could build little cute huts. <laughs> some call it a waterway, some call it a moat. It's a moat, it's a moat point. <laughs> moat point instead of moot point. <laughs> it's funny, you can laugh. <laughs> Too much metal music. Where's the metal music? Just uh, carve out the uh, moat in the shape of a D, so we can have the D moat. We could have the D moat, and then you can get demoted. <laughs> oh, get demoted. Right now, D was thinking of just putting it around the perimeter of this area, so that it would be the boundary, and like people would see it and know, oh, that's the border to the oasis, and there would be like some bridges here and there to cross it just so that it helped people recognize where the edge of edge of the property was. The music is very soft. Do you want D to turn it up? It's just vintage ambiance. D can turn it up a bit. Is that too loud? It's just vintage vibes. Let me know if that's way too loud. What is this? No Christmas music. 
Just random vibes. So would this turn your pyramid into something like hanging gardens? Yes! That is kind of the vibe these coins for, the hanging gardens of Babylon. But with fantasy flavor. It's not even spooky season, but we've got Christmas too. <laughs> it's just the vintage playlist. Unfortunately, lots of Christmas music came from the 1920s. And it's actually He's turning it down because it's too loud. And you could actually turn on lo-fi if you would prefer. Delane, do you listen to music while you game? Uh, usually. Yeah? What kind of vibes you got going? Uh, I kind of just have a uh, playlist that I go through, but I can't really put it on. I can't really use it on stream though. <laughs> have you used Slipstream? Has he introduced you to that yet? Uh, I believe you've told me about it, and then I forgot what the name was. So I haven't been oh. able to use it. <laughs> Slipstream is a streamer's best friend. It is a royalty-free streaming resource. Oh my goodness! So, Shadowfish, Shadowfish, if you want to, you see now this, we need to dig. this wall right here. Let, let you count. Has you seen Shay's very painful project? No, I've not. I've not. Let you do a count real quick to make sure we have a square. The goal is for this pyramid to be in the center of the property. And we may have to move it, but let you do a count real quick. Can't help but mention how accurate we are at digging while being in third person. <laughs> We're so good. One. To, it's because D can't really stay in first person too long because D will get motion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, nine, thirty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. to wall one. What about this one? Not nearly 50. What do we think? That's 50. One, two. So that's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, uh, 56. 56, so it's more this one. So it's 50 over there? Uh, 51, I believe. 51, 56, that's okay. And then what about this guy? He needs to write this down. Feel the view is why most people feel motion sick? Really? So let's see. One, this is definitely not. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 18. <laughs> 18. So this wall needs to be pushed out a lot. And then expanded so we include the waterway. Well, if we're planning on building a larger, grander temple. Yeah. Maybe it might just be just easier to... to scoot it <laughs> over to the left. So, this is 18. Alright, and it's 51 that way. So what if we move it 18... 19. That looks like the server is going to be restarting in a few minutes. 20. Oh, we're restarting? Why? We can begin the build project. 19. 20. 20. 20. 20. 22. 23. 24. 25. So, 18. 19. I've got 7. So, 51. 50. 9. 24. He wants to make it even. Uh, I wish I were a bird. <laughs> How to make it even? This is 20, and that's 40. So... How many across? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 35. 35 is the square foot for the base. Oh, 
Oh, the server is restarting. Okay. Do we need to exit then? Yeah, it should boot us out. Okay. And how long until it lets us back in? Uh, if it's like other restarts, a couple of minutes. 35. Lee's gonna do some quick math. Okay. How do you do some math? Math time. Time to figure out how to center. How to center. He doesn't know what this is. So. Alright, where is a text box? Time for a text box. He needs... A... We'll use the snack label. He is not getting snacks. We're gonna do some quick maths. Alright. Temper maths. Time for temper math. So... Oh, thank you, dual hydrate. Take a hydrate. One to five minutes? Okay, good news. Hmm. You should stop and eat lunch? Yeah, let's go grab food. Take a break, grab food. Dee's just doing some maths. And we'll take a gaming break while the server is restarting. Okay, temple maths. So we had 51 on one side. The temple itself was 35. Is that what Dee said? Uh, I think so. And then the other side was 18. Okay. And then, did we measure to the other wall? That was 56, right? Uh, yes. So, how to center this guy? D needs to... Let's see. What if we take away 10? 41. 28. 31. 38. Okay, too many. But we also don't have measurements on the other sides of the temple for the side with 56. We don't. But this one's right by the water, and he is okay if it goes down to a waterway. What if we did... Hmm... Well, are you moving that whole temple one yeah. for one? D is going to scoot it over, then we'll probably move the temple. Unless it would be easier to move the wall and just dig out the 18. Well, you're saying you're planning on replacing the temple with a larger one. Yeah, we were going to increase the temple, but he wants there to be enough space between the edge of the temple and the wall that it's still defensible. So... Well, that's what I'm saying. It'll, it'll be a lot easier to find the uh, center if we tear down that the existing temple in preparation of building the new one. Mm. It's too small. That's what she said. Yeah, it is too small. We gotta make it bigger. Bigger. Must in it. So this is the current dimensions surrounding the temple. And then we have an unknown area off to this side, which is the uh, where the water is. Okay. So this is what it looks like block-wise for this temple. Right now. We must in it, but there needs to be, at a bare minimum, 20 to 30 blocks surrounding it. If there is not 20 to 30 blocks surrounding it, there's not enough defensible space to fend off an invasion, or to add landscaping. So, we can move this temple. It's right now 35. We could make it bigger, but we'll also need to move it. It's a 600 block square. Hmm. Hmm. Two plus two is four minus three. That's quick maths. Good job, quick maths. <laughs> Good job on your quick maths. Hmm. Eventually, the goal is. Maybe D can make this in a grid. Is there like an online grid generator? Hmm. Grid mapper. Sky grid? Don't know what sky grid is. Seed map? Sky grid map? Grid maps? No. He wanted to make a map. Thinking in the golden way. 
Brain is braining as hard as it can right now. Out of their uh, minimum. Uh, server's back up. Mm -hmm. Server's up. Okay. He's trying to think of the maths. Do you want to make a minimum of 20 blocks around the perimeter? But that still feels too little. So what would you have to do to make this 25? Well, D, if you, if you hop in, I've uh, cordoned off a section that shows how wide 20 is on here. Okay. So, take our maths, temple maths, and let us return to the server. Thank you for letting me know. Cat temple must be big. Let us find out how big we can make it. Ooh, he has a delivery! Yippee! Wonderful! D Kingle and you. Pretty, pretty shiny things for an upcoming hand cam stream. Let's go! Ooh. That's good when to Okay. As soon as it loads. Oh, so if D increases the field of view, will that make it less pain? It's already at 8. You've cordoned off an area. What is this measurement? What is this measurement you are cording? Darling? Alright, so... What are we looking uh, this, So the uh, outer one closer to the wall, that is 20 spaces away from the wall? Well, it, 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 it's on the 21st block, so this way it's 20. This way? Which way is 20? Uh, from this spot to the wall is 20. Okay. That really doesn't feel like a lot of space, honestly. Then this one is 25 from the wall. Liking 25 a bit more, but that still feels too close to the wall. Maybe we go 30? Pull it 5 30. more in. D will get these blocks. Oh no! Forgot which tool he was using. Thank you for the mark. The visuals help. D is very much a visual creature. So if that's 25, let's try 30. 30 might be the winning number. So that's the 30. Yep. Yeah, I think 30 will give us enough space to play around with. If not 30, then 35. That will give us a good bit of space to play with. All around the perimeter. That would be a massive temple, though. So maybe the 30 block will be the inner ring of moat surrounding the... 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 the, the temple. And then the temple can be within that. Cause yeah, this this feels like a lot more space. Okay, let's make this easy. And underneath the blocks that you have so lovingly started to place, if this is thirty and thirty, uh, hold on, I can we make a it a small calculation error? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. What you would like to do is dig it into the ground and dig a moat. And then he is going to go grab a bucket of water. Oh, I got one. You have one? We're going to need two, though, yeah? To make the okay. never-ending bucket of water. Okay, there's an empty bucket. <laughs> we need buckets of water to begin the project. It's building time. Okay, I have seven buckets on me, so... That is a lot of buckets. Why do you have so many buckets? You never know when you're going to need a bucket. You never know, says Darlery. You never know. Yeah. 
We now begin. We begin. Bucket, we bail. <laughs> that, I got the two buckets of water we need. Oh, jeez, Louise, thank you. Do a little cheap. Just that, and just that. So we're digging out the uh, moat yeah. from... The moat, so make your never-ending bucket source first somewhere. And then this area that you have cordoned off is going to be the moat. So this is 30, or is it 35? Uh, this should be the 35 on both. 35 on both. So let D count these out, and we can square them. We have... Oh, these ones are 30. Out. Oh, these are 30? Okay. Yeah. Just to give the a general visualization. Underneath the blocks is where we want it to go. And it so the blocks are on the 31st space. They're on the 31st space? Yes. So, so you... right right before and on this side of it will be the uh, 30 block here. Okay, Wonderbus. So now D just needs to make this a square. So let D count out some spaces and square it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Five. So this is the current size. Let's make it forty. Six or seven or eight. Forty. Okay. And then oh no wait, because that'll be the moat, so it needs to be bigger than the temple. Forty-one. Can we count 41 from here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 19, 20, 25. And that is where these stopped. Now to dig through the pyramid. <laughs> We're just gonna chop this boy in half now. It feels bad, but we'll have to rebuild it anyways. With different materials. He is very focused. He does not notice the Kitsune hiding in Chuck. <gasps> yeah, he's counting. Counting takes much focus. And that is the only time you cannot look at chat, is when we're setting up the boundary. Welcome, Ayla! Very sneak. This is why you are to be feared. The ninja skills are no lie. For those of you who don't know, Ayla N is one of these closest friendos, and she streams on Twitch. If you are looking for cozy vibes, but total pure ferocities, glorious art, and um, fish. <laughs> You need to check out Isla on Twitch. Art streams, glorious. Gaming, fun and joy. And really good voices. Also fish. <laughs> How are you doing? Isla, these actually up in our small group chat if you want to pop in and say hi. We are, we are on the public server. If you want to make a sneak cameo. Hi, Elder Design Farm, welcome! We're just doing cozy Minecraft hours. Finally getting around to the build of the temple. Finally. It has only taken forever to clear out all of the blocks. And now, and now we do. We dig a big hole. Welcome, welcome! What are you up to today, Isla? You having a good one? You enjoy? You have some work? Boo! Yeah, no, going ahead! If it's too much trouble, don't even worry about it, homie. He knows you have stuff you have to work on too, and that is okay. Do only a little sad. Not a lot, so only a little sad. Oh, and there's also a collab thing that they put in the group chat to see when you guys are free for you to host some events in the coming weeks prior to debut. This is so satisfying. Oh my goodness. Wee! 
There goes the temple. How many levels are there? It won't matter. We'll build it based off of it. Based off of it. It does. It sounds like a, like a drum of some kind. We must hollow out the temple anyways, so that it can be um, designed inside. And then we will gather the glass and we will make the temple. Oh, Darlene, do you know where we can get glowstone? Can we go on an expedition into the nether? Uh, yeah. I have another portal at my house. Sweet! He requires glowstone. <laughs> Hi, Dorothy, welcome! Welcome to Cozy Chill Minecraft Go Hours. We are demolishing the temple to then rebuild it and center it. Why is there so much of whatever this rock is right here? This rock is too numerous. We must be rid of this rock. Why is this so thick with this rock? It causes the pain and suffering. Use the player mic. It makes your life much easier. <laughs> I love Ren's little blips on this server. This is wild. <laughs> so right now, he is carving out the inside of this temple. Because it is going to need to be carved out anyways. So that we can turn it into a temple. So that we can make the floors pretty. So that we can make it beautiful with big fancy columns and stuff. Why are there so many blocks? If only there was a way to just like... Um, nom 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 through all of the blocks but this specific level is the resource world has its own nether to farm debris for what do you need debris for? TNT or beds? what does debris do? Uh, debris is how you get the uh, netherite debris is netherite Colin Stanley loves eating rocks <laughs> No, that poor boy. He was supposed to do science, and instead you made him eat rocks. This is what happens when you give chat control of the D&D campaign. <laughs> Six debris scraps and four gold? Is that equal netherite? What is debris composed of? Cheese? Like my dreams? <laughs> is it his dream of cheese? That is debris. It's funny because debris is a cheese. You come out there. It was a very good a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's right! Hello! Darlerian's face it floats because Darlerian's uh, PNG is a floating PNG. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Darlerian, if you ever cut the bottom from your PNG, then it will not float. And now we have the face of Isla. Wow. <laughs> this is so cute. We <laughs> might actually take Darlirian and grab Darlirian's individual. Where is that? In his ear. Found it. Found it. There we go. Hi, Isla! How are you doing? Hello, hello. This is Isla. Gaze upon the Isla. Wow. The, the glorious goose. <laughs> <laughs> so hello, were, everybody. You were doing works, you said? Yes, yes. I'm trying to uh, make a logo for a thing. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Dee is finally going to get time to um, look at that thing today and play through the thing and give feedback on the thing today. <laughs> Wink. Wink. <laughs> Wink. But yeah, but yeah, again, no, no pressure with that. Like I, I know you heckin' busy, so Do like. Do you want to please. so badly? <laughs> it's just the past few weeks have just been. Oh my god. So. Oh yeah. Dee's oh yeah. Trying to make a lot of things happen for DPU, and maybe these being too ambitious, but 
D also really wants to give people some fun things to enjoy. So D is going a little crazy and has had to like do lots of meetings to get merch stuff prepared and mm. make sure the art is ready and get all the files in order and check with the, the people who are finalizing videos first off. It's there's a lot of coordinating that goes into mm. setting up events and D would not recommend doing that on your own. <laughs> I I haven't technically like had a, a big proper debut. I just kind of show up with new stuff, um, would, just because like I I do not plan at the best of times. But would you if, like if I, to in hmm? the future like do an Isla 2.0 update for your mom uh, and such? Because you've had so much like experience gain over the past like year to improve hmm. your art and play around with rigging. Are there things that you would update if you had the time to? I <laughs> the hesitation man. is palpable. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe? I, uh, maybe. What you think? I mean, it's not... I would need time to contemplate, yeah. probably. So most debut planning takes six months. It's wild. Hmm. Unless you've been prepping this stuff beforehand. Because debut has so many pieces. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like the biggest parts of it are going forth and introducing yourself to a community. And it's showing off the things that maybe you haven't done before. Like, have you ever done like a likes and dislikes and just let people get to know you? I like fish. fish I like maids. Fish. Maids are I mean, I'm pr I'm pretty simple, <laughs> really. I don't th I don't think I. <laughs> is that is that like an orc maid? Yeah. Muscle mommy, let's friggin' go! It's beautiful, <laughs> guys. Isla has this way with shading that just makes my eyes happy. These eyeballs are so happy. Gaze upon the art, <laughs> and I'm just Isla 2.0 blob evolution. <laughs> Have you seen Isla's blob? <laughs> It's the cutest little thing ever. I mean, it's so fierce. It's so fierce. That thing will claw your eyes out. No, 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 no. Look, look. The blob is the cute one, okay? That's it's fine. It's fine. It's so adorable. Could you die? It's so cute. <laughs> the little fluffy tails are immaculate. I just want to pick it up and squish it and give it all the nice things in the world. <laughs> it's so cute. That is the stuff dreams are made of. It was so adorable. Yes, Irina. It's so cute. <laughs> We need some cozy blob hours. Mm -hmm. It has been a very low energy kind of week. It yeah. has. Something in the air, maybe. I don't maybe. know. Maybe it's the season. Who knows? Maybe it's the time of the month. <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> Bro. I heard some uh, other creators talking about debuts and how they wished there was not such a big importance put on debuts. He understands why companies do it. It's mm -hmm. the first time that the world is getting to know the people who are in your company. Mm -hmm. But for like indie creators, it feels like it's a wonderful way to make a splash. And to be like, this is me, hello. Welcome. Get to know me and my vibe and see if it's mm -hmm. right for you. Or, but maybe B is backwards. Like it doesn't feel as necessary when you're indie. Just wiggling for an hour. Would that be a stream that y'all would be interested in? If I mean, we have kick and tunes. We just do dancing. No? I think we could make it work. Just wiggle and we dance? Mm -hmm. Have you heard the poke dance? D has it stuck in her head. Poke dance? No. I. It's possible. <laughs> like, I, I hear a lot of meme music, but also, like, I don't know the no names of things specifically, so. He's got it. <laughs> I, is... I think the pokey dance was actually an official uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, do you put it in, in the group chat? This, do you put it in the chat? This one. This, it's this one, it goes. So, so randomly, I'll show you guys what I just want to say. Like, like... <laughs> say that one more time, so her D turned it on, it was loud. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, you're, you're planning all the things and you're trying to make the, the debut amazing. The debut, it's already going to be amazing because you're going to be there. He is so nervous. 
<laughs> he is so nervous. He's going back and forth in the vibe of, oh my God, it's going to be so much fun. He can't wait for everyone to see everything to the, oh my God, mm -hmm. they're going to hate it. They're going to look at it and go, bring back the cat. They're going to riot. They're going to riot and they will hate me forever and he will cry. And that is how these brain has been the past like two weeks. Every day, Aww. closer to the beauty, freaks out a little bit more and goes, please don't hate the you. Will it be, it'll be on a Friday. It'll be on a Friday to make it easier for some people to get to. Friday <laughs> seems to be a good day for events. Where are the beans? Isla, have you had beans today? I... It's got good food. I had some... I... I... I, I didn't have I didn't have beans, but I had some fried rice. Does that count? Fried rice is close, but it doesn't have as much, as much fiber or protein. Oh, you're, you're missing out. Your body craves beans. <laughs> <laughs> it it requires the beans. <laughs> Do not deny the body the beans. I mean, they they are quite the magical fruit, aren't aren't they? The more you eat, the more you crave the beans. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how that goes, yes. yes. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, how far did you guys get in on uh, the Night Witch? D was, D was lurking, and D was working, and D was watching, and then D had mm -hmm. the stream, and D is so mad about it, because I wanted to see how it went, because that story <laughs> has me hooked. Oh my god. Um, I... Well, there were there were some spoilers, and <gasps> then and then some other spoilers, and oh my goodness, you should totally play yeah, it. It looks really good. That might be something that maybe you can justify playing here on the YouTubes. The YouTubes. Yeah. This is where Dee just does her for funsies things. Mm -hmm. Twitch is where Dee is trying to do the Grouf. Grouf? Isn't that a Pokemon? Who's a Pokemon? Grouf? Grouf? Oh, Growlithe! <coughs> Growlithe, maybe? It, yeah, no, it, it's this joke. Like it's joke, the Pokemon thing. <laughs> What was the joke? What was the joke? No, just my not pronouncing the thing correctly. Words are hard. Who pronounces things correctly anymore? Make your Madam. own pronunciation and have fun with it. He is hollowing out. <gasps> We've leveled up in mining! But does that Heck give yeah. anything? <laughs> Darlerian, grow a leaf. <laughs> Isla. I mean, isn't he like Darlerian? Aren't you like? Oh, there's a treasure chest. Probably there. like eighty percent leaf by volume. What the heck is well, that? There's some twigs and branches in there too. Hmm. He just found some you... treasure and an Ooh, iron horse. Ooh, secret. What? Do you... What's with all this rotten meat? Rotten meat everywhere. Um, nom nom nom. What is this? Oh, that's the uh. That's the treasure room. Huh. Treasure. Uh oh, he's stuck. Let me out. Let me out immediately. Nope, you live there now. No, D is not living in this hole. <laughs> I mean, it's got it's great it's got great atmosphere. You've got like riches all around you. What more could you want, right? Tia has a good point. I said wish that we could compare notes about Outer Wilds, but it's so freeform you never know what might be a spoiler. <laughs> so Dee has been playing for a little bit and keeps discovering little clues. Honestly, Dee's not sure where the end of the game is, except Dee understands we should probably be working towards stopping the sun from exploding. I feel like that is a good plan. Yeah. Good plan. Okay, it, how about... Yeah, go ahead. Could you, if Listen, there's one piece up. of in advice you could give to D, what would it be? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. No I still idea. need to finish the game too. But you still have to my, I haven't finished. No. Okay. Well, I mean, I haven't been playing a lot either. But like, my, yeah. but the thing that I think we could universally talk about, yeah. when, like experiences. So I think, things everybody has experienced in the game, no matter what. Like you, you go talk to the guy to get your launch codes, mm -hmm. and then, and then the statue looks at you. It just gives right? you the face. <laughs> it freaked me out. Because I'm like, oh, it's an exploring game. Like, it's not going to be some weird horror and thing. And then, and then, surprise! Yeah. Surprise! I'm looking at you. Yes. Stop. Stop looking. Don't do it. it so that... 
freaked me out. And then... <laughs> but my tan! No, Master Bot, the sun is exploding. That's not the kind of tan you want to get. That's too much tan. That's like a third degree tan. We don't like those. We only want the first degree tan. <laughs> the less crispy kind, but still crispy. Mm. No, it it definitely does some simple, weird spooks. What was it like the first time the sun exploded? I had... Explode? Okay. So, like, I was just so very confused. Like, I, I knew nothing going into the game. So, like, the way that they handled the resetting, I'm like, wait, did I clip through the floor? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> no! And so then I'm like, wait. Like, I didn't actually realize that time had reset. Mm. And I was—I just woke up back at the thing, and I'm like, "What? Oh, I guess I got a game over somehow. What did I do?" And so I didn't actually think that it was a like time loop? a loop. Yeah, I didn't think it was a time loop hey, at first. No. <laughs> Mystery time loop. They got gotcha. you. Maybe it had to do with where you were looped, where the loop occurred. Oh, hey, I, I, I did have some rather. Uh, interesting encounters let's call it that so like you know there's like a well in yes. the village that you you can jump in and you'll die before you even like yes. do a time okay loop. you did that too okay you <laughs> yeah. were so curious do you wanted to know what's inside i mean you gotta test that stuff for science right yes scientific death is still for science i wrote it down so it counts But yeah, how about you? How was your first time loop and the statue looking at you, D? D was very confused. D definitely jumped when the statue looked at us and was like, Hello? What's happening here? Are you going to look into my soul? What do you want? What do you, what do you need? He doesn't have it, but what do you need? What do you want from D? You're we so confused. But then what D started noticing is like after going to a few planets and talking to a few of the dudes. Have you been to a few planets and talked to a few of the musical dudes? Out of I space. have talked to a couple of them, yeah. They don't really seem to care much about the planets, like the sun exploding. I... well, that's the thing. I don't know if they're aware or not. Maybe they are, but maybe they're not. D found one who was like, Oh yeah, I'm just waiting for the sun to explode. And one of the options Dang. was like, You're pretty chilled about this. And he's like, Well, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. And I was like, okay, Wow. I guess, but bro. Bro. Really? That, that, that's I guess. Wait, okay, hold on. So, it's like a Groundhog Day situation, right? Mm. So, like, you, you get, like, a, a, a couple of days, and then and then you, you go back. But you, then you still gain knowledge and stuff, right? Yeah. Do you hmm. found... Uh, how far have you explored on the Ash Twin and Ember Giant? Or Ember Twin and Ash Twin. Uh, far have you explored with those? I feel like I, I've explored a fair amount, but then I get to some place and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go look at whatever that is. Or I hit a button mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, something is changing. And then the world resets. I'm <laughs> There's only <laughs> such a limited time until the reset. Oh no, wait! <clears throat> you know what it is. Okay, how, how wide were you wanting this uh, area here? Oh, we need to get back to counting. You forgot to count. <laughs> you got sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. From, uh, from this brick over is 39. Those are numbers. <laughs> Jeannie needs to count again. Hang on. Let's do count. Should I help? Just do like a random. 19, 21, 21 13, 6, 9, 9 3, 3, 4, 4 7, 7, 
to oh god he lost oh no <laughs> <laughs> Stop, I'm sorry. Good. He's just gonna destroy these blocks as he goes. That'll work. One, two, three, four. So five, tempting. Six. So Don't do it. Seven. So eight, tempting. Nine. One, Eleven. What? Crap. No! Well, D, from, uh, <laughs> from this brick here. Yes. Uh, all the way over to the adjoining brick on the other side is 39 wide. 39? Uh, with. So with the ones kind of forming the uh, wall okay. here, it'd be 41. This was, this was 40? Or is this 41? Uh, from brick to brick or moat to moat? Brick to brick. Brick to brick, 39 between them. Oh no, from this, this, this one. Oh, from moat it's to moat 41? then? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's 41. Okay, so then... Wait, moat? You, you're counting this one? These counting, uh, where no, is no, these I'm down? counting everything inside the moat. Okay, so 41. The boat is not factored into it. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5. So this is 25. And it was 41, you said? Uh, yes. Okay, so then B wants to take this square. 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 5. 36 here. You will put blocks on 35. May I make a suggestion? Yeah. Deep? Can you place a torch on every fifth block? Oh, smart. 35, 36, 40. 40. So then this is the 41th. That is the 41th. 41th. The 41th. And then. We go all the way this way and we will clear everything that way. Oh no, the treasure room's going to be flooded. Oops. Quick, quick, block off the path. Oh no. Oh no, flood. But if it's submerged no! like that, maybe it's You're like... You're going to drown in there! Come out! <laughs> no, are you stuck? Turn around. You should be able to get out. You should be able to get out. There you go. Oh no! Poor Joe! <laughs> Staring up at D from the hole like, help, help, I am under the water. <laughs> yeah, Please Joe has me. been in the background. Background, Joe. Super sneaky. Okay. There is a grave up here that is going to need to get moved. Ah! Oh. Where did D just fall? What, what happened? They're inside the the pyramid. D is going to die. We're going to be very careful now. Holy crap. We need to move everything over. This is kind of neat, but also kind of scary. Woo! Spooked. Spooked. <laughs> he gives the ideas for columns, but he doesn't want to do it like this. It's too small. Uh, we, we are going to have to get Isla back on uh, Minecraft one day. We have to show you what uh, Ren and Darlirian set for us. Because there's a Whoa. cute little thing from the, hi from, the, from the holidays. Oh, thank you for the hydrant. Also, hi, Remy. Okay. I'll, I'll have to, to log back in at some point. Yeah. I, d I desire to. I do. I just... There's so many games right now. The need for democracy is also strong. <laughs> I mean, I've kind of been playing like a couple of games every night, but like, is that enough? I don't know. He has I... been slacking democracy. Feels <sighs> like a dirty thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just leave this grave floating here? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, D. As it says in the training manual, a a happy Helldiver is a deadly del di hell diver. So like you you take your time and you you do the things that you got to do, you know? To make sure that we can kill bugs with exactly. great precision and justice. Okay, yes. facts. Ooh. Do we have colored glass? He doesn't know if he asked for that. Oh, uh, we have glass. It's not colored yet. Okay. What color do you, would you like? He wants white. Blue, yellow, and purple. The big majority colors will be white, 
um, purple and yellow are accents. I mean, technically, purple, yellow, and blue are accent colors, but white will be the primary. Okay, white's easy enough. That's just bones. Oh, and, and I have, have a, a good source. For, yeah, I have a good source for bones too. Don't ask <laughs> why we have so many bones. It's just a lot. <laughs> so, so why do you have so many bones? Just like bones. <laughs> but no, I'm really concerned, actually. Don't worry I mean, about we, it. We do have what an if... overabundance of bones. However, we do not have an overabundance of trespassers. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> now you're getting it. Yep, yep, yep. Oh man, taking this pyramid down is taking too long. He was upset. Not good. It is build time. Once so, build. You, f you found the pyramid. You were, okay, so last time I was able to tune into one of these streams, you like you were digging out around it so you could have a cool area. Are you taking down the whole pyramid yeah. so you can build it to like proper code? We're like... going to rebuild the whole pyramid anyway, and it mm. was instead of digging out another massive wall, we're just going to center it within the area we've already dug out mm. to make it okay. just that much easier. Okay. So, yeah, I guess if you're gonna dig out the pyramid anyway, it is good. It works. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, D should have destroyed it early. Just did that. I'm down. <laughs> uh oh, there goes another tool. D was worried about OSHA violations. Yes, exactly. You are stinky? You should go sour. Don't be stinky. Go sour. Go be clean. You have no excuse. People who are like, I am stinky, go go bathe. If you can't bathe, do a sponge bath. If you can't do a sponge bath? What happened to your hands? If you don't have hands, how are you typing? If you're just speech to texting, where's your government issued robot? <laughs> you cannot shower, you're at work? Your work does not have a gym? Adjacent facility nearby where you can shower. Rude. You don't have a manga cafe nearby where you can shower. The world needs more manga cafes with showers so nerds don't have to be seen. You have the best excuse. There's D. D is not a reason to be stinky. <laughs> this is not the kind of reason. <laughs> so D really wants to play the Night Witch. It looks so good. Like, that kind of fantasy mystique vibe is right up these alley. Mm -hmm. Is this a purple block? It's so pretty. <gasps> Lovely. It's been crushed. We will find it in the bottoms. And then we can turn on her even cooler shade that's specifically in the water at the time. Defect. She needs to take dust packs like a chinchilla. Only on Thursdays. Every other thing <laughs> must ensure we are dusty so that we maintain the look of knowledge. Dust is knowledge. <laughs> we must roll in the dust. It's you. You get the knowledge of the earth from the dust. It makes sense. The particulates carry the knowledge of the ages. Mm. <laughs> Are you having fun fishing, Joe? On a little fishing trip? Can you fish? Yeah, you doing good? Okay. <laughs> fishing until... Until D has to get rid of that level. Absorb the sands of wisdom. It's no longer the sands of time. It's the sands of wisdom. I mean, what is... Actually, you have almost a uh, double chest full of white stained glass now. That should be. Whoa. We don't know how much, because Deke has not mapped it out, how many blocks would be required to make a pyramid yet. But we have enough glass that we could probably color and build as we go. Right? So I'm just going to finish tearing down this structure, and then can begin the building. But this might just be the, the setup phase, and then we go to the next cozy What has been your favorite part 
of the game thus far? The, the Night of Witch or other game? Do you have a current favorite of what you've played recently, Isla? Wow, hmm, 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 hmm. That's hmm, good question. Too many good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Helldiver is very good. I, I haven't played it on stream a lot, but like, yeah. as like a casual the unwinding game. That's like my current Whoa! top pick. Where is ah. he? He is in a <laughs> hole. Help. Why is he in a hole? Agreed, though. Like, Helldivers is such a fun game, but D doesn't find it the kind of game that D can comfortably communicate with an audience while, while playing. Mm -hmm. It's one of it's, those. It's a bit out chaotic, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Here, have a way out. You may continue to mine for fish. <laughs> I mean, I played Pacific Drive recently too. That one's also very fun. Did you see just like, truck driving? How oh, I didn't. I missed it. He took us all along. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, D took us all along for a ride in the big old truck, and we spilled soda in the back seat. <laughs> no, no, D not for you too. D tried Damn. to flip, but D didn't do it well enough. Only when D wasn't trying to flip did we flip. <laughs> <laughs> D had such sweaty palms trying to keep the steering straight. It was pain and suffering. D heard that you are a very good driver. And that you are oh yeah! <laughs> I only run into a few trees. Okay, see that's talent. D couldn't even flip off of a bridge properly. Do you want ants? That's how you get ants. Exactly. <laughs> Spilling food in the back seat. This is why your mother is always telling you to clean up after you sleep. Actually, that was a problem that Dee's household had growing up. It was really? Cool. Yeah, Dee's little sister, when she was very small, was quite messy. And Dee's father unit was messy. And Dee's brother was messy. <laughs> and Dee's mother unit was always freaking out. And they're like, you can't leave food everywhere, you'll get ants. And that absolutely happened, because someone left like a thing of cookies out. And there were uh -huh. ants. They just walked right in and they made a trail from the cookies outside. They were just taking pieces off of the cookies. And then they were wow. escaping into the wilderness. And the way we found them was we had a cat at that time. Lovely big big black cat. And mm -hmm. she was just sitting there watching. Them. She was just sitting there staring at the trail of ants. It was like the most exciting thing she'd ever seen. And we were like, What you looking at? Oh my god, there's ants! <laughs> Freaking out, and then I had a I had a friend with a similar issue. Yeah, just ants. Well, he he dealt with it by taking a rolling pin. Oh dear. <laughs> oh no, violence. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, ants. So speaking of cats watching ants, though, so I had a cat. This was like years and years ago, mm -hmm. um, and it would. It would it would lick them. It would eat them, like off the the line that they were walking. And so it was like I had you know, didn't find the ants and you'd have to be very careful. <laughs> oh, it's a cat would just cat would just eat them. Even like like fire ants and stuff? Like the big there weren't it wasn't fire ants, thankfully. But yeah, they, I, they were just fascinated and they were just like, I'm a I'm gonna lick that. <laughs> Isla's cats just eaten ants. Why the spice? Why the spice? <laughs> That's such a funny. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Pure protein, exactly. Mm. <laughs> oh no, where did all of these sticks go? Get them. Sticks. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I have a little bit of gold in storage. Let me go see what I get. 
Jason needs to find more. Oh, what do I need? Can I get more of these? 17? 16? Oh, never mind, you can never repair this. It is I have three stacks of gold ingots. Three stacks of gold? That's wild. One of these pickaxes will be something that you can repair. Here we go. Yay! Some of them just have an enchantment level too high. Too high! Mm. Oh yay, we're almost at the bottom. Good progress. Pure protein, your cats stare at bugs, they rarely attack. One of your cats likes catching big flies, keeps them in her mouth to enjoy the buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> My cat, what do you have? And you just hear in the cat's face. Why is your cat's face buzzing? It's eating flies. Is your cat <laughs> hungry? Tell us your cat is hungry without telling us your cat is hungry. <laughs> is cat eating flies? Did you put the cat unlawfully on a diet? <laughs> I mean, according to the cat, according yes. I mean, their cat's vegan, so... The cat is vegan? We were able to prove that a lion could be vegan. Poor lions, like, <laughs> Don't it's have to... Futurama eat. reference. Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah! Ooh. Well, that was death. We saw it. We saw it happen live. <laughs> what what are... Oh, no, no, no. Although, to be fair, not harping on vegans, so. Yeah, not harping on vegans. One of these besties calls herself a filthy vegan. <laughs> she's, she's got good plant knowledge. And she makes tasty plant things. And we're going to need that knowledge when the world falls apart and then there is nothing to rely on from modern societies. You will require the knowledge of the beast and the mushroom. <laughs> Them back. Oh god! That was wrong. Stand and do not do that. Wait, wait! He wants to wait over there! Wait a minute! Okay. Now. <laughs> I feel like maybe animals enjoying the vibrating sensation of flies as they chew on them is akin to human enjoying like fizzy pop rocks. I think it's the same. Maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Just a thought. Uh-oh. <laughs> Getting this last layer is dangerous. This last layer is causing death and destruction. That's because we made the mistake of starting on the first floor and then working our way from the top <laughs> cannot down. cannot help right. it. He is a dwarf at heart and needs to tunnel through everything. We must dig. <laughs> the mind calls. Must dig. Oops. Dug too far. Whee! Said no dwarf ever. Said no dwarf ever, exactly. And then D oh, dug thanks. too greedily and too deep <laughs> and awoke something in the deep. We awoke in something in the deep. We dug too far and we woke The Balrog of Mulgoth. How freaked out would you be if in Minecraft one of those just kind of appeared? Oh my goodness, if you dug somewhere in a mine and then it's like, poop, hello! I'm the Balrog! <laughs> just poop right out of nowhere! You're popping over for a spot of tea. Just a spot of tea. Hello, I noticed you didn't have any Balrogs. I'm here to fix that for you. Bippity boppity boop. Get ready to turn into soup. And then we all die. <laughs> oh, gracious me, I've run out of tea bags. I will have to use Yo, you. You are now tea. Congratulations. Your skin will work for the time being. All right. <laughs> and then, yeah, that is the outline. So Dee can start building. Do we have do, do, this floor? You can leave it open because Dee is. Why are you fishing for Dee? <laughs> you have fished for Dee. What now? It worked. 
What now? 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 So D is eventually going to take the floor and replace it with something shiny, like um, calcite or shiny marble, Ooh. or something oh. like that. Speaking of shiny things, yeah. Want to take a break from Dick and go get that glowstone? <gasps> yeah, let's go get the glowstone. D needs a weapon. Joho, do you want to come get glowstone? Yeah, let's go get glowstone. D needs a weapon and to put the sand in her pocket in a box. Got the sand in my pocket. D needs a weapon. Uh, yeah, I got some diamonds. I can go make you one. Death shovel. The shovel of death. Does that count? Oh, we've run out of boxes. Are there more boxes? Please tell in me. In a box. There are more boxes somewhere inside one of these boxes. Inside this box. There's one. Yo, I heard you like boxes. So I put a box in the box. <gasps> Just for you. Call me. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it though? There's, there should be boxes in this box. Where is it? Sand. Sand. I'm seeing a lot of sand. More sand. Other sand. Other, other sand with bones of copper and dirt. Nope. Nope. Oh jeez, where are the boxes? Nope. 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 This one's empty. Nope. Ah, uh, here we go! Bomboleo! Bomboleo! Oh, you can't put it next to this one? I won't let you. Oh, uh, toss one on the ground. I'll get it set up on there. Okay, uh, how to toss Q. You pushed the wrong button. That was not Q. Alright, so it should be... Nope, that made the second chest. That's 92. Do you need there to put you. a block there? Oh, I got it. Got some sand in my pocket. The other one is making a piece of it. I got sand here in my pocket. The other pocket probably has some lint. Pocket lint. <laughs> I keep a chapstick in my pocket. That's smart thing to keep in your pocket. Do you have a multi-tool? Darlene, what about you? Are either of you multi-tool carriers? Uh, yeah. Thank you. I... I don't, actually. I, ha I have a nice little uh, Gerber. A multi-tool. Nice. He keeps... Oh, is that just regular unenchanted iron? It is... Probably. Yeah, it's just normal. <laughs> oh, he can only fix one piece. Oh, that's okay. I have plenty of iron. <laughs> well, D just doesn't just have make you a... for it. That is we, we can just make you a whole new set. Remember, I have like an infinite iron source. Point. Darlene has too much stuff. So, like infinite iron source? Do you have a do you have a, like an iron golem farm or what? So in the server you can uh, buy a, buy an item called a spawner, and I have it one set up to spawn nothing but uh, iron golems, and it's also set up to instantly butcher them and throw all their stuff in the chest. Wow. Well, we're not murderers. Okay, okay. We're not murderers. We're definitely not murderers. Probably. Putting away all of the unnecessary items so that he can ensure that he has enough space. What are you? Don't don't shoot! <laughs> don't shoot! No! Still <laughs> out here pointing a crossbow at you. No! 
I, I have 20 stacks of iron blocks right now. <laughs> oh, we're gonna need to fill in this hole, or cut this hole out and make it into an oasis. Brought you into this world, I can take you out of it, energy. <laughs> Darlene, you said you have a thing at your house? Uh, yes. Everything we like alike alike alike. This was music back in the day. First person. Let's go. We're in Darlene's oh. house. You didn't close the door! Give us, give us a tour. Okay, we got a long yeah, corridor. A long corridor. Okay. G give a tour? Okay. Uh, let me, uh... Oh, yeah. Of Go dirt and guys. beautifully, um, what's, here, wait, let me change her, her, um, shader to the complimentary one. It will be brighter. Brighter shader. Oh, hang on. You're thinking about it. It's, You're waiting. It's Hold on. It's trying for its life. <laughs> Gonna be streaming later? Yes. Yeah? What you streaming today? We doing art today? I mean, we're probably gonna be playing more video games, but Which we'll see. Play? Uh, probably more of the, the Night Witch. <gasps> okay, he's gonna jump in. He has to go catch up from the VOD. <laughs> it's such a good game. The story is right up these like fantasy vibe. Mm -hmm. All right. We are prepared for the tour. Lead right, on let's, my let's stroll. Have, let's have the tour. All right. So down here we have the storehouse. This is where I store and make most things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beautifully labeled boxes on either side, and the walls surrounding you are a sturdy stand of sandstone. <laughs> quite elegant. Quite elegant. Yep. Then right in here is the small room that I uh, have my bed in. Uh, don't have an actual bedroom yet. Oh my. It's a prison. <laughs> Give yourself more <laughs> space, homie. I like that you put a brick on the floor. It's pretty. I, I don't need a whole lot of room to sleep. Up here is the main house. It's like you have this, like, um, super, like, what, what would that be? Like an antique, like, loft apartment thing? Yeah. And so you have all this, like, little cozy space. Look at all the colors. This is great. Are those kitchen cabinets? These you are. have a whole yes. kitchen? In well, yes, I have a full kitchen. In it has a microwave. You can... Don't know if you can use them, but in Renterra, you can decorate. <gasps> you have a button! Oh. It's an oven. It's even got the vent hood. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And a fridge. Yeah. Does it work? I didn't know they had... And because I'm Minecraft? sanitary, I have a trash can too. Nice! Got, and look, got the nice lights. kitchen table. Got like spotlight light mm. lighting. This is gorgeous. And a cozy little book nook. Mm-hmm. Book girlies, take note. Darlerian can decorate and has book nook to offer you. Yep, got my couch with my TV. And the streaming <laughs> setup. I have my computer. And of course, the bush. Yep, the origin. Mm. Needs an altar, the original bush. <laughs> this is so cute. It's so good. This is really good. Where to next? Uh, where to next? Uh, if you get space on this, you'll pop up to the next floor. <gasps> what Wait. is it? It's an iron block. It's an elevator. <laughs> an elevator? Yep. So I haven't done anything really much with up here, but this is the big tower leading up to the lighthouse up top. What's outside? We're now trapped in the oubliette. Oh. He wants so, to know. This, so Hello! this floor up. <laughs> oh, you put it back wrong. Nope, still wrong. Uh, you, you have to go outside to replace that one. Why? <laughs> I'll fix it later. Dang it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> D out here ruining your walls for fun. She's so sorry. <laughs> this is why you don't let D into your house. <laughs> oh. D can't. Mm. Ah! So on this floor, we have the little balcony here. <gasps> balcony seating. Ooh. 
if, if my view distance was higher, I'd be able to see the temple. But uh, we got a house there, Joho's house, little, uh, one with a bunch of orange yonder over there. Pretty! Mm. And over here, you can see part of the uh, pumpkin farm and the bridge that goes over to Rainbow's territory. <laughs> Rainbow's Island! Oh wait, you can increase your view distance. How do you do that? Uh, video settings? Render distance? Video. How about that? Oh, we can see a few more. Mm, very pretty. And the makings of the temple, which will be right over there. Heck yeah. Yep. And if you go up a few... If you go up all the way to the top, you'll see the, uh... See the work I had to do to get all of these things lit up. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! And here we find ourselves... ...on the lit level. Yep. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to make the roof out of. <laughs> We forgot he was crouching. <laughs> hmm. Well, while we're in the nether, you could get like a blue green wood to match the rest of your. Oh no! Yeah, fine. <laughs> Why did you die? How did you live? I, did. I have enough health to survive that. <laughs> Is there a water I was about source? to say, I was about to say jump, but you, you beat me to it, man. Where's the you nearest can, water source? You can try to land in the water here. Uh, wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> do it. Do a trick shot. Do, do it. Do it. Do in it. The no, it's over, at the, it's over at the pumpkin farm. There's water at the pumpkin farm? Wait. Uh, in between the rows of pumpkins. <laughs> he doesn't see water there at all. There is. <laughs> Go <Girl> landed. <laughs> oh, there is? Okay, so is yep. that... Are they... Well, is the water... Oh, God. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you just missed. <laughs> Dang it! I think you broke my crop. You, <laughs> no, you took that leap of faith. No, broke your crops. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crops. It's okay. They can be replanted. <laughs> Gee, out here ruining your stuff. This is so <laughs> oh, you can just maybe change the town spawn, or it's gonna kill everyone who comes to town. Um. He's going to make the town spawn. I say you leave it like that. You gotta keep people on their toes. <laughs> They're just gonna... Wait, set. They're just gonna die in midair. They spawn in midair and they just drop to their doom. They could drop them into the water. That would be kind of funny. I do have the rest of the house tour to do that. I'll put it right here. <laughs> There's still the rest of the basement. To, uh, oh, we gotta see the go rest through. of the basement. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And then to the nether. Ow! Nobody knows. Oh, that's right. If we're going to the nether, I need to go grab my box of healing potions. <laughs> you don't need healing potions? You'll be fine. Oh no, they're not for me. <laughs> Boy, do you know, D. <laughs> <laughs> D died. Yes, it's okay. D's fine. If he fires it, nah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Sleep is overrated. Okay. <laughs> now, where do we find the rest of the amazing abode <laughs> of Nidali? So, out here, I have my mailbox. <laughs> mm hmm. And go back inside. Also, note cute little dish trays. Whoa. That's a shoe rack. It's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, you're supposed to. D, you're shoes? supposed to take your shoes oh. off when you go through his house. I'm take the shoes off. Okay, go to the shoe. Remove shoe. <laughs> Here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't pick up her shoes! Hey, did you, you just. Just, just carry, carry them. Okay, fine. Just yeah, just them. just being respectful. Yeah, yeah. We carry the shoes. Back down the stairs. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> the healing potions aren't for me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and 
now we enter the long basement. Along the beautifully laid brick pathways and stairwells. In inlaid lighting, very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Here we have my nether portal. Simple but elegant. <laughs> we have the lava generator. Mmm, lava! Don't touch it, kids. You'll die. It's a spicy or if you use a bucket. drink. <laughs> use a bucket so you don't die. Don't put it on your friend. Yeah, that's my point for making obsidian. Oh, that is a automatic composter. Automatic composter? Yes. So if you go into this chest and take the uh, poppy flowers out. This one? Or do I have that locked? Okay. Nope, it's unlocked. Remove the flowers. Yep. And then put those flowers in the top chest here. Okay. They are being eaten. Yes, they're going into the composter, which the composter is then turning it into the, uh, into the bone meal, which is then getting put into this chest here. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. So you have to oh. sit there and hold down right click with piles and piles of stuff. Maybe I should make some fire resistant potions. Joel, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Trust, trust in me. Trust. And so... <laughs> This spawner here is the one that spawns the iron golems, so it's always making the uh, iron bars and those uh, poppy flowers. So it nice. creates iron golems which immediately die and then get put in a box? Yes, because I have it set up to where it automatically butchers anything that spawns. Otherwise, <laughs> they would just be full of iron golems down here. <laughs> Requirement. More golems that won't sit in the corner. <laughs> and then uh, this spawner here spawns nothing but slimes. So I have a nice collection of slime balls. <laughs> oh my goodness. Industrious! Patch, 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 patch. <laughs> then, I was gonna say, like, here... you need a lot of slime for, like, making contraptions and things. I've never really, like, what gotten is... to that point yeah, what's in, in Minecraft. Uh, but, like... sticky pistons, mostly. <laughs> hmm. <gasps> this is the cellar! The wine cellar! Oh, this Damn. is for alchemy. <laughs> The wine cellar! <laughs> she sees no difference. Wine the cellar. finest vintages of wines are kept here. I keep forgetting to bring water down here. So. <laughs> Don't you have a water source by the, I... the drippers? No, yeah, right over here. That, that's only a single piece of water, though. It's not an infinite water source. Oh, just one. Only and then over here, I need to trim these down again. Cellar, so you can wine in it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Glowberry farm. Yep, temporary glowberry farm, but eventually this area is going to just be a kind of friend like, zone theater. Well. It's so cozy. Yeah. The hangout lounge. It's so cool. Pastures. And then over this way. Is the exit back up to the uh, bridge that goes to Rainbow's area and the pumpkin farm? Along with my nice street lights everywhere, too. The beautiful street lamps, so lovely decorated. And this is the bridge to the forest of Rainbow. Yes. Ooh. This is so Which, there's nice. Another shirt. There's another little uh, Darlarian bush over there, too. <laughs> there's another bush <laughs> hidden in there. But that is an adventure for another time. We must away to the nether. The nether awaits! <laughs> Alright, I think I'm gonna drop out of the, the voice chat for now. Get some more work done. But yeah, we're hanging out with you guys for a bit. Are these bad guys? Oh my uh, god, they're bad guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did they come from? <laughs> They heard you talking about the the nether, and they're like, hmm, nah, we gotta put a stop to that. Where did they come from? Uh, no idea. Uh-oh. Spook. Alright, well, thanks for coming and hanging out with us, Isla. You have a wonderful mm -hmm. day. And what time are you streaming? Uh, in about three hours? Two and a half? Two and a half, there? three hours? Yeah. Two and a half, three hours. Okay, make sure to check out Isla on Twitch. <laughs> they spawn in the forest. Uh oh, Rainbow's domain is under attack. We might have to save Rainbow in the future. 
we're going to go obtain glow stuff, begin the build, and I think you will stop there. Thanks for coming to hang out with us, Ira. You have a good rest of your day. Okay. Thanks for the tour. It was fun. I'll catch <laughs> you guys later. Bye. Bye. Now you will swap out the fugi for the fugi. Fugi fugi. Bigger dog. Sleepy Darlarian is the cutest little bean. <laughs> Byla. Byla, that's cute. <laughs> Byla. I, I, I am a little bit sad, though. The person that I got this uh, from, they yeah. closed their uh, Twitter account. <laughs> Who closed their Twitter account? The artist for your beautiful PNG? Yeah. Unfortunate. All right. Where can we find Glow Boys? Hey, there's Glow Boys up there. How to get up there? Uh, find a better spot. <laughs> hmm, maybe you can dig up. Like over. <gasps> hey, the glow thing boys is, over there. Yeah, if the gl if the glowing bits are too high up, then when you build up to it, you gotta build a big platform. Otherwise, they'll fall down. You'll lose track of them. Oh. Or they'll like drop in the lava and yeah, burn up. Yeah, you have to build a thing underneath them. If they <laughs> He's gonna dig this way because he saw shiny boys this way. Are they exactly this way? He's probably in the wrong, but. We will find them! Oh. oh, that's right! You can level up here! And then be able to adjust equipment accordingly. And leave some torches so the baddies don't kill us. Will baddies spawn here? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Watch out for death. Found it. Over there. Oh, what is that building? Uh, more of the Nether Fortress. Okay. He's just gonna build a little platform to get to it. Because he now has enough material. Courtesy of this lovely, lovely walkway. Pardon us, dudes. We just need your, uh, your stuff. Yeah, we just need your stuff. Hey, what's this? That's a fence. Oh. Oh, it was uh, also a What's up? This? Here's your uh, armor set. Oh, thank you! <laughs> you did you not say need to... Stuff, I'll stop the side somewhere. <laughs> you didn't need to, to do that, but thank you. It's very and I have a silk touch pickaxe, so we can actually get the... <gasps> yes! So then you should pick it off these, I think. Because he does not want to uh, destroy them. I'll try to get from that. Uh, I got four from that, yeah, the, the And there's more down there, so what D will do is while you're picking that, D is going to build like a stairwell down that way. I'm already done getting the stuff. <laughs> already done? Yep. Is that one block? Okay. And now, just gotta build a way over there. Let's see. Ooh. And then we'll build our way down. Just to the wall. To the wall! And to the other wall! And then make sure they don't fall. Because we need these guys, one and all. Gonna go away and get some glow stuff. Gonna get it for my den. Open the way, and then we'll build. He will build a floor underneath. Okay, building the 
the floor. Just go here. Go down here. Find out the edge of it. And then... Woo! That could have been very long. And he is going to dig down and find where it ends. So watch your surroundings. He's gonna try and get low. Get low, get low, and then put a floor underneath it so you cannot die. But he has to find the bottom first. Woo! Okay, I think this is... Nope, there's one more level. And then the bottom. Okie dokie, Loki. Right there. That is the one. Whoa! Calm down, Shadowfish! It'll be okay! You don't need to panic! No need for panic! <laughs> Immediately continues to panic more. If nobody tells you not to panic, this is the perfect reason to panic. It is not the reason. We do not panic. We do not panic. Okay. We have cordoned off the base. So you will not do the death. There is one block that is going through the bottom, though. So just be aware of the very, very, very tip. And now we can make a road to the next area of glow. One more glow. Who will cross this football? Thank you, Jock Nerd. You, you've been really busy the past few days. Hope you're doing okay. Also, thank you to the mods who are always coming to hang out and keeping us from doing the death. Keeping keeping the community well cared for. He appreciates you. Who's trying to kill us? Hey. Hey buddy. He has a laser with your name on it. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> That's right. Get lasered. Dang it! You've been out of town on business? Oh! Happy you're back! Was your business trip fun? Did you have a good time? Did you go and kick some butt and take some names? Don't they know that killing you is illegal? No, they don't. They think these wings are basically cheeky nuggies. <laughs> This is the, this is the pain and struggle that he goes through on a consistent basis as we mine for fish. Oh, you know what D should have been doing? D did a very big stupid where D forgot to you know uh, put down things in our way. <gasps> Joel and Darlene, are you guys okay? Yeah. Oh my goodness, he scared D. He thought that you were dead. Torches here, so people know that this used to be a glowing area. This we should maybe leave one layer of glow. He's gonna punch one. Now the the Nether gets reset every so often. Oh, it does. So will these dudes respawn? Uh, yes. <laughs> Same thing with the resource world gets uh, respawned every so often too. Resource world? What's that? Uh, it's a version of the overworld that gets uh, reset. You can just go over there and tear it up, get resources Whoa. from it. Oh, he's not been there. <gasps> Hi, 
secret identity? Oh, I hope your trip to the blood bank was okay. Were you receiving? Or were you donating to vampires? And you have the silk touch pickaxe, yeah? Yes. Okay, they will stop taking from you because it's better if you take. You want to give? Oh, very kind of you to give. D gives blood whenever there is a local blood drive. Because D is a universal donor. D is a Oneg. Oneg. Which means everyone can eat these blood. It was very useful on um, deployment. <laughs> People were always like, We've got the blood bag with us. <laughs> no, Oneg is universal donor. O positive is a uh, receiver? No, no teacher. But he has always been told he was a universal. A universal donor is um O. Wait, what's the difference between O neg versus O positive? So O positive blood can be given to anybody with a positive blood type, but can oh. only receive uh, O positive and O negative. Okay, it says. O negative is the most common blood type for transfusions when your blood type is unknown. Because O negative is the universal blood type. O negative blood, however, can only receive O negative blood. O negative donors who are CMV negative are the heroes for the babies at Red Cross. Yeah, that's D, because you've never had chicken pox or other certain diseases. D's blood is the safest for transfusions for anyone who is immune deficient. Only 7% of the population have O negative blood. It is very versatile and in high demand. It's the first blood supply to usually run out during shortages, so he always gives. O positive is given to patients more than any other blood type. So it is the most needed blood type. About 38% has O positive. It's the most common. O positive are not universally compatible though, but they are compatible to any positive blood type. Yeah. You can only give to positive. <gasps> You're D's opposite! D's a negative! We cancel each other out, which means we must be arch nemesis. <laughs> positive blood type is over 80% of the blood population, so most people can receive O positive. You were the page all along. <laughs> no, Jainer! <laughs> o positive donors who are CMV negative are also heroes for babies at the Red Cross. Again, safe for transfusions. Um, so, in major traumas with massive blood loss, many hospitals will use O positive blood, even when their blood type is unknown, because the risk of reaction is much lower. O positive is usually more available than O negative. O, o positive is critical for trauma care, and those with O positive can only receive transfusions from O positive or O negative. So, D can only receive O negative blood. If there was another person who is O negative, D can receive their blood. But D can give anyone her blood, so D is the walking blood bag. Yep. You told D that you were Ned. It was the truth. D, you weren't lying. D never knew. So D will save your life, hopefully, in more ways than one. Are there any other shiny deposits nearby? How much yeah, glow we got? This one here. How much glow we got? Oh no, the pitch! <laughs> Though I do think there is one blood type that is so incredibly rare it's not even like countered into these charts. Isn't it an A or an AB? Uh, RH null, I think it is. The rarest blood type. Um, the rarest blood types. No, rarest blood type. Oh, RH null. A definition of a rare blood type. One that happens at a rate of 1 per 1,000. One of the world's rarest blood type is RH Null. Fewer than 50 people in the world have it. It's called the Golden Blood Type. Cool! He never knew! Apparently oh. most of the illnesses out there just can't do anything with the blood cells. With RH? So they're yeah, so they're practically immune, immune to everything. Immune to everything? <laughs> Dude, that's like a superpower! That is so cool! If you are RH Null, you are the the immortal fey generation well the thing is they can only accept blood from rh null oh. they can't get the o nobody else's like blood that. 
Oh, that's wild. That's so we have almost two stacks of glowstone right now. Is that enough for a king? Nah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna build the entire pyramid out of it? No, or we're gonna use it as accent corners on each floor. Or on the bottom and on the top. The pyramid must light the way to wayward travelers. And hopefully be a beacon. A light in the dark for them. When the night is dark and filled with tears. Uh, that just reminds me of a fake commercial. A fake commercial? Or a fake? A uh, fake commercial. They made, uh, somebody made a commercial for Beer of Thrones. Beer of Thrones? <laughs> yep. I think their slogan was, the night is dark and full of tears, but this beer is delicious. But this beer is delicious, that's great. Okay, we can build out to that now. Giggling all of the time. No. It's not. It's not. There we go. Now we've connected from one side to the other. When it comes to blocks like glowstones, never enough. What about the debut? What about the debut? What do you mean? Oh! Wrong. No! And maybe one more. Do you guys remember the way back? <laughs> Probably a bad time to ask that question, however. You can always just do backslash home. True! This stuff will teleport with us, not like Valheim, right? Yeah. Okay. Yee! He will pick it up. He has plenty of space. Uh, if you want to stick the uh, glowstone or anything inside here, I brought a storage container. Sure. Oh, wrong. He forgot he was crouching. <laughs> and if you want some healing potions, uh, this the white one is completely full of healing. Ooh. No, he's good. I think. All right. Think we're good to hoof? Any other glowstone that we can see? Glowstone, glowstone. Scruffy Squares, there was a kitchen. There was! She had to go and finish some work, but she'll be streaming on Twitch in about three hours. Is there any reason to collect this rack? Can you use it for anything? The uh, netherrack crystals? Yeah. Uh, yes, those actually make some uh, nice looking blocks. Uh-oh, there's a Cause... skelly boy here. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, make one of them here real fast. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh! Ah! Excuse you, sir. Excuse you. Oh! There he goes. He's dead now. Never mind. That's a... The, the, uh... The nether quartz? Yum. Uh, makes this block. One second. Oh! That's pretty! This red netherrack stuff, uh, if you put it down and hit it with flint and tinder, it will stay on fire forever. Forever? Yes. What is this called? Uh-oh. Uh, that was a block of quartz. Okay. How to get down? Safe. Without that. Kind of like that. Okay. He's like, wait, there's there's a way somewhere here. Mm, maybe. These bricks are pretty. He kind of wants to steal them. So he is going to take some. The red stuff can be used to make the bricks. Oh, <gasps> yes. like these bricks. But why waste them if 
you can steal these. Will they use them? Maybe. But for the meantime, we will collect them because they're pretty. Pretty rocks. Oh, should we go look for some green trees for your roof? Perhaps. Watch out. We accidentally dug too far. And there is no floor here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you got too overzealous. And there was no floor. Try going this way. What's this way? Mushroom, mushroom. Badger, badger, badger. Is this way? He does not remember there being lava. Uh, if we're looking for the green trees, I'm just kind of. Oh, green trees. Around, to... He wants this. Way. Yeah. Well, that leads to a dead end. <laughs> does it? Or is yep. it just not been explored yet? Potato break. Break of potato. Are you sure this is a dead end? Yep. But the walls. The walls go on Stealing their bricks. The bricks are these now. <laughs> Yoink. Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. There is a thing over here. A fence post? Does that mean there's something down here? And that's just what they used to outline the uh, buildings with. Okay, he's just gonna steal their brick. Stealing! He is a sneak thief, stealing your brick. But D, stealing is wrong. But, but D wants it. <laughs> is it really wrong? Is it so wrong? <laughs> Should he repent? Or should he repent? Which is the out? Uh, good question. <laughs> I think we go straight here to get back to the nether portal. What's this? More death? Oh, there's a lot of corridors here. Should you be worried? Something around here is making weird noises. Okay, I, I found the nether portal. <gasps> Blaze dudes! Yes, uh, so they're, the spawners are broken, so the things they spawn just kind of sit there and do nothing. Should we just smack them? In? Yeah, they're easy farming. Yay! He's never killed one. Die! You, you need the uh, blaze rods for all sorts of alchemy stuff. Alchemy! Ooh, free rods! Is it that wrong? No. Is it wrong, regardless? So we just wait here and we can farm their sticks? Yep. How many rods do you need for a, a thing? How many of the rods must you collect? Uh, you need one rod to be able to make the, uh, uh, the brewing stand. And then you break down other rods into the flame powder, and that's what you use to power the brewing stand. Flame powder? So he needs powder. three is what he is here. He has two. Need one more. Mm -hmm. Free rods! And also to find these easier, my nether portal did open up right next to one of these as well. Oh, great. <laughs> Can we keep this and turn it into... No, if you break it, it gets destroyed. Even with silk touch? Mm -hmm. Uh, because of the way the server is, it's to have the custom spawners. Oh. So you cannot farm their very existence. Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> For fuel! Okay, he has three. Yay! Are you trying to figure which one to eat? The ham. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, hey, there's a dude down there. Is he bad, dude? Uh, he'll ignore you if you don't go to him. Oh. <laughs> you bought a custom spawner for blazes? No, that's fine. Use it for your purposes. Perhaps D will get one. Eventually. He's putting down torches on the way that we went. This way? Yep. And there's our nether portal. <laughs> and the skeletons are fighting. <laughs> Where are they fighting? <laughs> nice. Okay, let's bring our hall back to town. We're over this way, follow the torches. And then, and then maybe, do you want to explore the nether a little more? How are you doing on time? Uh, me? I still have a little, almost 11 here, so about two hours for I have to do anything. Okay, okay. And then we can look for an area for green trees. Uh oh, these game crashed. Oh no! What? Why? Another. <laughs> My house was too strong for tea. <laughs> well, dang! Hi, Heimdart. He crashed. D has been denied. <laughs> No! The peach has the ward at D! It's a good stretch time. <laughs> there, there's a pigeon in your computer. <laughs> there's a pigeon in your computer. Warning! Too much Minecraft may turn you into a block. Assume block. Pigeon revenge? Why revenge? What did D do to the pigeon except tell it that D would not be its girlfriend? Why does that deserve revenge? Download more RAM, that is not the answer. <laughs> no matter how much you want that to be the answer, that is not the answer. <laughs> One page is mad at you for denying them. Minecraft. And his uh, girlfriend is mad at you for saying he is, uh, saying that her choice in man is not good enough oh, for you. It is the female <laughs> pigeon who is trying to get revenge. <laughs> oh no, they, they, they both are now. <laughs> okay, let me make the game show up. But after my laughter Try again, game capture. You can do it. I told my friends I didn't care. There we go. No, Gumpy D is not going to delete system 32. You'll never get the The VGM is not D singing. It's random vintage um it's called Relaxing Vintage 1920s because the 1920s music is completely royalty free combined with these uh, looped rain sounds. <gasps> Did you just learn a weird fact about. Oh, whoa, what just happened here? Um, it is not the right size. Did you just learned a weird fact the other day about. What's it called? about uh, sound effects in like movies. Okay, where is D? D is in your house. D is going to bring the items in D's inventory to the tower. To what will be the, the thing. To what will be the temple. He's in your house, Goodbye. not your house, Kingdar. Would you like be in your house? He will steal all of Goodbye. your tuna packets Goodbye. and make tuna mats and beans. All of the beans. Uh, the, the only tuna I have is in cans. Canned tuna is still valid tuna. Whoa, what's all that? Uh, so I mapped it out and the center is right here at the storage. <gasps> Okay, he has some gold somewhere. He wants to turn it into gold bricks. And he wants to make the very center floor where he will put a dais because you can't have a semi fantasy saying or setting without a dais. He's going to put it on gold once more. Alright, so, uh, so what he is saying is uh, he needs gold blocks? He has some gold. It might actually be enough. Um, how do you. 
good block. There we go. He has enough for seven, which we might be. He needs to get rid of the miscellaneous items in here. You needed copper for money, yeah? There's plenty of copper in that chest. Hi, fish! Did you freeze the water? I think he has the, uh... His, uh... Water walking boots or something. So that one... Oh, oops. He cut too far. Um... How to... Build it back up. Um... Wrong. Yeah, I was right there. He's trying to get your, uh... Your thing. It's stuck down there. Shoot. Oh. And then... Yeah, just like that. Perfect, perfect. And then D is going to... Um... Cover the rest of the area. All of the inside of this square is going to end up becoming a uh, white. White, shiny something. Intermittent with other colors like blues and purples that will make little sun designs on the corner areas. But he doesn't know which block to use for it yet. Okay, he needs to take these end blocks and he will put her gold and her netherite and her random stuff there. And he is going to grab the white glass. You said there was glass over here? Yes, in the glass chest. Perfect. He's gonna grab a couple of these stacks and begin the perimeter. And if glass ends up being a big nope, then what D will end up doing is replacing it with a shiny white stone. Oh, can we have some of the gold or glowstones? Oh, yes, they're in the red chest here. Red chest? Oh, thank you. He will put them in the box on the end. He will take this 20 for right now. And mark the corners of the pyramid. Colored concrete? How how pretty will that look? Because uh, I have some concrete. I'll go uh, grab it right now. Beautification. Initiating beautification ritual. Okay, I'm going to need a lot of white concrete for the uh, Lyrian labs when I finally start building that. How do you make concrete? A uh, mixture of gravel, sand, and then a uh, color source. Gravel, sand, and color source. We have gravel by the droves in several of the boxes. I think D is going to have two entrances. There will be an entrance here. And then there will be an entrance on the other side of the base. So if this is the center, we'll line ourselves up. I'm just marking where the wall will be. This one will be a small one. He needs to replace the floor with something white and shiny. Would it be easy to find, like, where do you get calcite? Do you remember that being a beautiful box? Oh, uh, whoa, come down, bridge. Where do you think? I think the most common place I find calcite is around the uh, big giant geodes underground. Geodes underground? Oh, amethyst! That stuff? Also in the geodes. <laughs> what is the geode if not amethyst? Uh, it's the amethyst crystals on the inside and the calcite on the outside. Ooh, where do we find that? Underground. <laughs> oh no! It is time to hunt for an acacia tree. Is that not how you find them? Ah, uh, good question. We must. Colored concrete is pretty and it's a great addition. But you need gravel and what was the other ingredients? Uh, sand. And then uh, whatever dye you want to the, the color to be. Well, we got sand. <laughs> we have a lot of sand. We have much sand. Okay. The, yes. This is going to be my entrance. We will require here. One, two, two center, and two block. 
oceans have a better chance of spawning them? Of spawning geodes? Of spawning what? Of spawning what? Now, to make the corner pretty, he needs a throwaway block. I'll just use. Yeah, just like Are you having fun fishing? We can make a bigger place for you to fish. <laughs> okay, okay, dude. Uh, I'm gonna. What? What you got? Take a look at this over here. <laughs> These are the different kinds of white blocks I could make quite easily. Oh! <gasps> Hang on. Let me turn on oh. her preferred shader pack. Make sure it's on the right one. All so these four here. Shiny. What are these? Uh, these are the nether quartz stuff. It's really pretty. And then over here we have the concrete before it's hardened. Okay, kind of green. And then, and then oh. concrete after it's hardened. This is pretty. The only downside is it's not shiny. But white concrete we could see using for a variety of different things. Especially and then the for calcite, mm. whatnot, don't think I have any of that anywhere. Dee's favorite of this is this one, the column. And the, this the one, one you're standing on? Yeah, these two. The column and the brick? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Can Dee get a whole bunch of those to replace the floor with, or do you require more additional material? Uh, I can make 30 of them total. Okay. We will need... Which one can oh. you make the most of? Uh, the concrete is the easiest to make. Okay. But out of the uh, nether quartz stuff, we just need to get a bunch more nether quartz for that. Which I might actually have some in storage somewhere. Let me go check. Okay. He just needs to know what stuff we can help you get to make those things happen. Another box. We should probably count. To find out how many blocks he's going to need to finish this. Okay. Here. I wonder what this will look like with the what's it? Uh, I do not have any in storage. You don't have? What do you have? Last, I have it in a box. <laughs> Unless it all got put out here. A glass pyramid is probably not smart. <laughs> but these gonna do it. <laughs> is it smart? Is it pretty? Will yes, it allow I do everyone to, to see inside easily? Also. And that is the point. Witness. The interior. Uh, so I'm going to make uh, two stacks of the uh, pillars and then the rest in the brick. Two stacks of pillars. And the rest of the bricks. Oh, for the... Is, is that calcite or... The no, quartz. Quartz. Thank you. 
That's it. Ends up being about four and a half stacks of the quartz bricks. Four and a half stacks? Is that enough to replace this four with? Maybe not. One way to find out? <laughs> yep. I'm going to dig up the floor. And replace the floor. Starting at the dais, replace it. Oh, it's shiny. What? So dig out this whole area by one? Yep. I wonder if these should put some glass here and some glow. It might be smart to make the foot of the dais glow. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? This one area will be covered in glass. But just that. <laughs> Everything else, no. To have a light source. I mean, you could do this around the rim. Pretty sure. To make it look like the sun. This is a very solar themed temple. So we will do one in each cardinal direction. Uh, in that case, we're going to need some uh, white terracotta. Why white terracotta? Because it makes the sun symbol if you set it up right. Ooh, that would be perfect for the corners. Then. How do you make white terracotta? Uh, regular terracotta and white dye. You fished turtle master arrows. What's a turtle master arrow? Is that like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? That's nah, Master Roshi. And the rest of this can be filled in with. He keeps calling it calcite, but it's not, is it? It's not calcite. It's concrete? No. What is uh, this quartz. shiny? Quartz. It is quartz. Quartz! Is there a tunnel underneath us? <gasps> Ooh, danger. Opening it. Opening the danger. We don't know what's down here. But there's danger here. Which means we must explore it. There's so danger here. riding into the danger zone. Highway to the danger zone. Come on. Stick. There we go. There's a cave under there. We will have to mine the cave. He wants to save that one for a future stream. Yes. For the time being, replacing the floor. By one block. Oh, this is sand. We're just removing this one layer. That's what we're doing. Will you show me the master arrow? Okay, the turtle master arrow. What is the turtle master arrow? What does it do? Does it master turtles? It just looks like an arrow. Arrow of the turtle master. Gives you slowness. Is that a four? Resistance, three. When it is applied, it gives you negative 60 speed. That's wild. Oh, cool. Have it back. Take your arrow. Use it wisely to turn somebody into a turtle. <laughs> I bet you that'd be great for a big boss battle. Are there any bosses that like arrow effects don't work against? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. Mysteries. That is a hole. That is a hole. And that is a hole. And he's just gonna put a glowstone here to deter the baddies.
Yeah, we're definitely gonna need more nether quartz for this. <laughs> Because just that small section there took up uh, more than half a stack. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Let me finish filling this hole. Oh, but you was gonna mention, so do you learn from a friend who does uh, sound engineering for like music? Not music. Um, for movie projects. And they were like, did you know that um, most of the time when you hear sound effects for things like rain, it's not actually rain. It is frying food. The sound of sizzling chicken puts you in a happy place. <laughs> the next time you hear rain sound effects, either in a movie or for like an ASMR video, it is probably sizzling chicken. <laughs> now you know. That's why rain makes you want nuggies exactly like right now everybody is gonna need some chicken nuggies after this everybody wow it's so white oh my goodness it's blinding this is perfect oh no where's these okay you couldn't see the door <laughs> he is going to need to put um maybe a more solid block <laughs> maybe the concrete is good Oh no! This hole is huge! Why is this hole so big? Fill! Fill your hole. Your hole is too big. Ooh. Too big. Too big of a hole. Fill. Who's digging holes under here? Was it you? Did you dig a hole? It was the iron golems. Curse those golems. That's why they're in the corner. This is what they did? That mm -hmm. absolutely makes it worthy of them being in the corner now. It makes sense. If you get them... Don't forget to take out the John. No, don't take out the John. Remove your John from these love slaps. If you take your homies out for love slaps, there should be no Johnny taking part in those love slaps. Unless your friend's name is Johnny. Just do not slap him, <laughs> okay? You do not slap him. You do not use him to slap friends. You do not slap friends with friends named Johnny. Okay? Love slaps are a sacred thing between two homies. Do not, do not desecrate the love slaps. What if the server's name is Johnny? What does the server have to do with love slaps with your homies? If your server is your homie, then yeah. Johnny the server can have a love slap if you guys get chicken nuggies together. But you can't slap him. Okay. It's very important. Why are there so many more holes? Who keeps digging holes? I swear, D filled in these holes before. What is happening? Is D going mad? Why are there so many holes? D does not want to spend her last 20 minutes filling in holes. Cease. Who has created this madness? Ooh, that's pretty. Who did it? More holes. Darlene, did you see who put this hole here? I did not. Curses. Random hole. Fill it. He's gonna run out of sand. But I'm pretty sure their name starts with an N and ends in a D. N and ends in a D? He is out of things to fill holes with. I think it was Ned. Curse him. Why are there so many holes? Now D needs more sand. This is my hole, this hole. No! There was no hole here before. Stop putting holes in the ground. 
We're trying to cover it. Of course, a nail head. <laughs> it was me. How can D make terracotta? And where can D find the materials for terracotta? Because blue might look pretty too. Uh, let me see if I have any terracotta in storage anyway. Because right now, this temple is so white, it is going to blind everyone. And no one will be able to visit because they will be blind. Oh, do we happen to have blue glass, by chance? Uh, no blue glass yet. No blue glass? Okay. How can we make it? Uh, you need eight pieces of glass and a thing of blue dye. Eight things of glass and a piece of blue dye. Mm. Mm. We need those, because more gold and more blue dye. Might have to go on a uh, terracotta gather adventure. <laughs> you can use lapis for blue. Huh? Yes. How do you make blue? Dye? Uh, just put it in your craft bar. There you go. Hmm. It will only make a block of lapis. No, no, no. Take it all out. Take it all out. Okay. And then just put a single thing in there. Okay. There we go. Thank you very much. And that plus eight pieces of glass will make eight pieces of the uh, blue glass. But we can also use it for blue terracotta, right? Yes. Okay, so you will not use it all. Because... Um, okay. so this plus... So, yeah, I have no terracotta in storage right now. That is okay. How do you make terracotta and you can go hunting the materials? Uh, I'm pretty sure you just have to find it on the ground. You find terracotta lying around? Yep. Yep. Okay. Usually in the, like, kind of uh, canyon-y areas. Let me do backslash resource. And uh, see if I can find the thing in the resource world. Isla, was it you? Did you dig the holes? Are these holes a creation of the Kitsune? Has the Kitsune a desire for the holes now? No longer the mine, only holes. Okay, and now, this needs to be a glow rock. Shoot. He needs a glow rock. No, you thought it was Isla, but it was me, Dio. <laughs> no, Kono Dio, nothing. Ready? Give us the glow rock. Okay. So now we need a glow rock. Oof. Oops. Oof. Look. I'd like to print you these are shoes. And this is enough. So that second row above will Sounds like what a guilty person would say. <laughs> you can't prove it though. And if you can't prove it, you cannot escape. Okay, and that will be. I don't know, D. That does sound kind of sus. Who's sus? D? You. How's D sus? How's I mean, D sus? I mean, you should know, shouldn't you? D doesn't know! <laughs> 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 and that makes you sus. Not knowing why you are sus makes you sus. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Blue. 
Here's a big old vein of terracotta. Where'd you find it? Uh, randomly teleporting around resource world. Random teleportation? And it, you just happen to spawn? Why does this feel too convenient? Our I mean, the, is overpowered. Lar large chunks of the biomes are... Or some biomes are terracotta. <laughs> you are too OP. Okay. Isn't the sus? Look at the. How is the shape of the sus right now? Explain it in a way that D can agree with you. I mean, you're, you're, you're a talking cat. That's sus, that's sus enough. How is talking cat adjacent thing? Sus. It's, it's not. It's not. Believe. You must believe. There's no sus here. That is just. The way D was uh, formed, okay? You can't judge someone based on their natural form. How very hypo hypocrisy of you. He's trying to hypnotize us. <laughs> the Wiggles have already hypnotized you. If D wanted to, D would have hypnotized more, but D has not. So obviously, D was a good guy. You can tell. <laughs> You're only saying that to get out of being sus. Nope. Oh, no actually, proof. Work. <laughs> no proof. No proof. You know nothing. Jon Snow. No proof. <laughs> and then D is going to build a layer above this. What is with this music choice, D? Let's go to Slip. Actually, this is probably a good point to take a break, but you will go back to the game. <clears> hmm. <throat> we go. D is going to finish out this row, and then it's probably a good time to pause for today. Close to finishing this row. Now it's starting to look like a goddess's temple. Now it's starting to look amazing. One, two, three. Blue, and then. Look. And we'll see how much darker the inside gets during the day and if the ground still blinds people. If it is still blinding, and you will think of something else to unblind them. 
Should we put this up on my floor? Oh! Oops. What is this? Yeah, that's, that's it. Cute. So, D, this is what the uh, white terracotta ends up looking like. <gasps> oh, that's so pretty! Yes. You want that in the corner of everyone. Corner, 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 corner. At least four of them. And then, depending on. Let me count some blocks. Because that's a 4x4 four four or 2x2. Two 1, 2. 2x2. Two. Uh, two 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And then we can skip 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32! Calm down, Pidge. And then... 48. Let's shoot for 48 pieces. For funsies. <gasps> oh, this glowing part looks so cool! So good. Looks so good. Whoa. Oh no! Are you stuck? Nope. Just had to. He has had another. Had to break glue the egg glue. Glue. I got it. Haha. <laughs> one more row. One more row. And this one is. Continue this, yes. That's a D. How, how do you want this spaced? Do you want the corners touching or have a space between them? Uh, have two spaces diagonal. Two spaces diagonal between. Okay. Frying rain noises. What is the sound? Up so, two. like that? Hold up one second. Oh, the wrong spot. This one will be offset. And if someone wants to fix these patterns, it feels like Just making it so that the wall has some differentiation so that it doesn't blend in too much with the surrounding and confuse people's eyeballs. Wait a minute. Yeah, I have a question. You what? So on this one, the blues line up. Yes. On the back one, they do. On the back one, they don't. On the sides, they will. On the back and front, they will not. He's gonna see which one looks prettier when this wall is up high. He doesn't know if offset looks prettier than stacked. Oh, I think I see what happened with the pattern here, though. Yeah, he's not sure which one looks prettier. He doesn't know if he wants the pyramid to have these lines going up it or not. But this might actually look nicer because it will look more sun adjacent as the light lines climb to the summit. Uh, D pattern wise? 
you have the uh, three corner piece here, right? Yeah. And then three spaces, and then the blue. Yeah. But on this corner, you have the corner piece, one space in the blue. And do you have silk touch? He does not have silk. I do. Uh... There you go. Thank you. It is one space then blue. One space. Let's move. You become white. White. But well, what I'm saying is the pattern on the uh, wall itself is a little bit wonky. Because right here, you only have one white between the corner blue and the first blue. And over here... This white is an accident. He does not understand. Oh. Well, oh, over here, you have the corner blue here. Three whites and a blue. Oh! That's because as we went down, one, two, three, and then there was too much space here. Like, three does not divide into this number. So, if we did... So these back walls are going to be different. It's just going to be this corner, and then this corner, which are different. But the rest of it should line up. Unless you can think of a different way to do it. I might have an idea. Okay. Then we will hand this back to you. Have this. I'm, I'm, I'm just doing the spacing on things right now. Uh... And... For these guys... You know, this is actually... This would work fine. This terracotta is pretty... I want to help me. But it is time for D to take a break and go get the food of the day and turn into a vegetable. <laughs> uh, D, what do you think about this pattern here? Two, three, four, so you have to actually go away. And two, three. With these two? So yeah, we're pretty much moving the uh, one blank rather than being shoved into a corner into the uh, center lane here. Okay, then we can change the color of this and make it purple. And then these two can just be a different color. Well, that could work. She's gonna go put her glass back in the box on the front of it. Yep. Plus, that way, the only thing we'd have to change is uh, pretty much this half over. So then what Dean needs to do <laughs> next time is hunt for purple materials. And then make purple glass. And then... Finish. And then see if any of these need to no longer be glass, if glass is just too radiant. And then we will switch it out for a solid material instead of glass. Okay. You do not have to keep building it, but that's a good idea for the pattern. And you will have to silk pickaxe the boxes out of the wrong slots. But that will be another time. We have done so many things. All of the things have been accomplished to the... Yeah, we finally got that mountain. Uh... The mountain has been cleared, and we can now begin the landscape. 
there's still some small things to adjust, like making the rest of the ground a combination of sand, sandstone, and dirt. So that we can plant things and start making things look cool and get some trees up here. Yeah, but it's really starting to come together. The poppies from Dar's Iron Farm can be combined with lapis to make purple. Oh, <gasps> good to know! Thank you! He didn't know that the poppies with blue could be purple. Awesome. Thornberian, thank you so much for all of your help for today. I really appreciate it. At some point, we might need to ask Ren to get rid of that uh, uh, tombstone floating there. <laughs> uh, maybe. But that is for another time. <gasps> yeah! <laughs> Thank you guys who have come to hang with us today for this super long Minecraft. Just cozy vibes for your day. Hopefully it helped the workday go by faster. For those of you who have been working hard today, just have some company. And for the rest of you, here is hoping that you make sure to take a break. If you haven't already, grab food, water, and a stretch. And we will see you cuties next week on Monday. It's been a nice chill day. Enjoy this little bit of, what's it called? Mm, low energy vibes. And we hope you'll have a wonderful week. Darlurian, will you be streaming in the next few days, do you think? Uh, I'll probably be streaming, uh, well, definitely Sunday. Probably with more Conan. I'm trying to build a, uh, build my uh, whole house there. <gasps> wonderful! <laughs> If you guys don't know yet, you can check out... Oh, here we go. Let me bebop to her silly music. Okay. Silly vibes. <laughs> One more stream and two more followers. <laughs> I can get monetized. <gasps> That's right! You're almost an affiliate! Let's go! Alrighty. Let me grab your link so that you can post that. If you want to check out... He is cute this, guests the, from the game, today. The game is very, very good. There is the eye lion, and then there's the darleary and the bush. You can find their streams here. Um, I can wake him into it. Oh, because it's mighty, 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 mighty. You can find them on Twitch, and as always, you can find me on Twitch at the streams link. <laughs> Link in uh, description, do you believe? It's always in the description. I was, gonna, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask who we were gonna read into, but then I remembered we're on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, <laughs> room, oh, YouTube requires that you have a very specific, what's it called, situation to raid in front. Oh my God, the little thing is in these way, and you can't pin it. There. There you go. So you can check out Isla and you can check out Darlirian <laughs> on Twitch, where we have much more integrative fun. Help Darlirian get to affiliate, and then Darlirian can do some cute widget stuff too. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will be seeing you guys. Oh, it's Pat, just Pat. Should be in the description, but it is exclamation point P H. Two head. It'll take a moment, but it should work. If it decides yossi, to work, yossi, yossi, yossi. Out. You are most welcome. Thanks for joining me for a cozy Friday. We hope that this helped you wind down for your week and that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye! Have a good day, everyone. See you all again on Monday. The next YouTube stream will probably be another morning slot on the YouTubes. But you'll be able to see it posted Monday morning, Sunday evening, the latest. Take care, everybody. Bye!